Running? Let's see here. It says I'm live. Let me know, leave a comment. Let's see here. All right, we're doing it. Hi everybody. So good to see you all again. Thanks for tuning in. Give me just a second as I situate myself here. Let me move the camera back. If you guys can see that. All right, hi everybody. Um, I'll give it a half, you know, just like a minute or two to let more people filter in. Um, but anyways, so this is the pre-tour of Egypt live stream. I fly out next Wednesday evening. Um, I'm on, and let me just say something real quick. British Airways is so lame. They did the same thing to me this time that they did to me last December when I was going to Egypt, which is they canceled the nonstop Phoenix to London flight. And this is after they just started it up again. Um, hold on one second, let me situate here. Anyways, I shouldn't complain, but here's, my, here's what I'm doing. I fly out of Phoenix Wednesday evening. I fly for, uh, to LAX, so Los Angeles, and then I'll have a nonstop red eye overnight flight to London. Um, and I'm actually really excited about it because I'll be on my favorite plane ever. I don't know if you guys know this, I'm a total airplane nerd. I used to want to be a pilot. So I'll be on a 777-300 extended range I've never been on a 777 before, but to all you plane nerds out there, it's legit. It's 10 feet longer than a 747-400. I don't know if you guys care about this, but I'm going to tell you anyway. And uh, it has the same wingspan. It, it can seat 400 people. It's amazing. It's a marvel of engineering. Um, oh, everyone's filtering in. Awesome. Um, anyways, and then so I land in London, and I'll have like an hour and a half layover before I have a five-hour flight, British Airways again, of course, uh, to Cairo and I land in Cairo around 11 p.m. or something like that and uh, they'll be on the 30th and then yeah I have a whole uh, you know I, I won't be able to sleep that night it's gonna be the same thing that happened to me last time because I'll hopefully I'll be able to sleep on the plane but I'll be so excited and it's a nine hour time difference from where I live here in, in Phoenix um, so, okay, hold on. People are filtering in. If you guys want to leave a super chat with a question or a comment, I, I greatly appreciate it. Um, you'll be hooking me up and I'll be able to use those funds for future travels and everything else because let me just tell you, I do have the travel bug now. Many of you know I was just in Peru last month with Brian Forrester and I'm of course going to Egypt with Brian Forrester again. And we're talking about doing a, uh, a Yucatan, uh, Mexico tour of like Chichen Itza and, and Teotihuacan. Um, so like, you know, there's a lot of places in the world now where we, you can travel to that don't require, that aren't doing the whole mandate scene. Um, so, you know, to anybody, and I've said this before, and I'm going to continue to say it. If you have a desire to travel, I highly recommend you get on it because this world is changing so fast that, I mean, you kind of got to get busy living or dying at this point, because who knows what the future is going to hold. There are things happening beyond our control and depending on whatever your thoughts and opinions are on certain things involving mandates, you, I, I, I suspect that limitations will continue. I don't know for sure, but oh, thank you so much for the super chat. Um, does this mean you're vaccinated? Uh, no, I am not. I had COVID last year. I got it in Egypt. My symptoms were incredibly mild. Um, and so I'm not going to get on this topic. People got me going last time. Hey, look, if you want to go get the vaccine, you go get it. My, I have my own thoughts on it. I'm not going to share in this one. Um, leave it alone. But no, I'm not getting it. And I never will. Ever. Um, but if you want to get it, go get it. I am just not susceptible to COVID. And, and don't even... God damn you guys for getting me started on that. Leave it alone. Um, hold on. What do we got here? Someone... Crogdog101 just gave me 50 bucks. What a... You're a gangster dude. Keep it up. Love the enthusiasm and insight. Thanks, brother. If I ever, hey, if we ever cross paths, I owe you a beer with that. That's very generous of you. Um, but anyways, let's get off the, uh, the, the COVID mandate stuff. Um, hey, guys, look, this, not, this is like the most divisive time probably in history, or at least in recent memory, right? Um, guys, we're all in this together. It is what it is. Um, but anyways, all that said, you know, there are countries where, because, God, I'm not, Stop. Just stop right now. Um, let's see here. What are people saying? So let me keep going with this. Um, these are coming in. We got about closer to 500 people here. Hi, everybody. So, okay. Let me just say what I was just saying. 
Flying out next Wednesday evening, I'll get to Egypt uh, in uh, the late evening on Thursday the 30th. And then so on October 1st, next a week from today, I am going to do a live stream from the Giza Plateau. It's go it has the potential to be totally epic because there's good signal out there. When I was in Egypt last November, December, I observed that it's full 3G bars pretty much everywhere in Egypt. Egypt is very modern. Who knows, it could be 4G or 5G by now, I don't know. Um, but I had excellent cell service on the plateau everywhere I was, unless you're in the pyramid itself. So yeah, I got my camera equipment set up and I am going to do a freaking live stream and I'm going to take you everywhere through this. If, if I lose signal, I'll start the stupid thing back up again. I have a, a external battery pack, so I, I'm gonna make this thing hours long. I, cause many people will never be able to travel to Egypt. I understand that. So I'm going to do my best to have you live vicariously through me, through my freaking camera. And I'm going to show you all of the things that exist on the Giza plateau besides the pyramids and the Sphinx. And I'm going to show you that stuff too. There is so much stonework and relics and structures that most people do not have any idea exists around the pyramids. Because again, the pyramids and the Sphinx get all the attention, but I'm going to show you 120 plus ton limestone blocks at the top of the causeway. I'm gonna show you uh, the nub phenomena, these nubs that I've been showing you on, on stonework and other channels have been pointing out. Um, I'm gonna show you guys this stuff. I'm gonna walk around the whole damn place on a live stream. I, I think it could potentially be absolutely epic um, because it's not till you're out there. And let me just say, I've researched Egypt so much and it wasn't until I got there last year that instantaneously you see like, Look at all this other stuff I didn't even know existed. Um, so it's pretty amazing. Um, let me give, oh, hold on. Thanks so much, Josh Randall, for, for the, your uh, super chat. A month, uh, what did you say? Best 49 I ever spent. Dude, that's very, that's very kind of you. Um, Mark Ritchie, uh, see you in Egypt on the first. Can't wait to talk about Atlantis. Woo, what up, Mark? Can't wait to meet you. All right, so that's another thing, guys. So I'm only going to be there for the first four days. This is the tour is October 1st through the 14th. But, and, and I, I alluded to this in my last Peru, uh, when I did my live stream, but I didn't feel like telling people about it at the time. And to be honest, I haven't even told my friends, but my family of course knows. So <laughs> I have a broken knee. I have a bone chip fragment that detached from my left femur and I'm okay. I, I'm in no pain at all. Uh, the first few days was really rough. It was swelled up and, and really crazy. But where I'm at now is that anytime I walk upstairs or I go to squat at all or put my shoe on in a certain way, it feels like it's going to lock up. And without, I mean, because I don't feel like telling the internet this, but I'll, I'll share it with you. So I've had five knee surgeries in my life. The last one was in 2014. And I have a rare knee defect. It's kind of more common now almost. Some professional athletes have had it, but it's called osteochondral desiccance or defect, where essentially the femur bone is malnourished from the blood. And over time, it can cause like it to chip away or chip off and die. Really gross. Um, so randomly a month ago, I was getting off my bar stool and I just opened my leg up and there was a loud pop, but it didn't hurt at all. And it felt weird the rest of the day. And then the next morning when I was getting out of bed, it almost locked up and I instantly knew what happened. And if anyone's ever experienced or know of anyone that's experienced a, a fucking knee lockup, it is, it is unreal. It is horrendous. It feels like you're, if you move your leg or your, your flex or excuse me, open your leg up in any, even for a fraction of an inch, it feels like the whole thing's gonna, because there's a bone essentially in between the joint and it feels like the whole thing's gonna shatter. It's really messed up. So because of that, there's no possible way that I'm gonna be able to crawl in or squat to go down inside the pyramids or other places. And, and there's a lot of tight spots. So I was gonna pull out of the tour altogether, but I really, really didn't wanna do that. Um, the whole thing was set up already. So I'm like, screw it. The first four days I'll be in Cairo where I'm not gonna to need to crawl inside anything actually. Um, and so when the tour flies down on day four or five to uh, Aswan or to Luxor, then I'm just gonna go home. It's fucked. I wanna be depressed about it, but I'm not gonna let myself because here's the blessing. I'm not in pain, I'm walking, I'm grateful for that. But um, all the sites that I really, really wanted to get back to, I'm now not able to. Um, so, 
But here's the thing, I, I'm, all, I'm one of these people, I'm very glass half full and I'm counting my blessings and that, again, I'm walking my dog every day, which is a huge must. The last time I had a knee surgery, I was super depressed because I'm not meant to be on crutches and caged up. And, and that's the thing. So just to share, I've been on crutches more than a year and a half of my life in aggregate. Um, so anyway, so where it stands now, you guys are gonna think I'm nuts. So I'm gonna avoid the surgery. So this happened in 2017. A piece of bone broke off again but I didn't have medical insurance. And I'm like, I'm not going to the VA. And it was really bad. It kept locking up and I was handicapped. It was, it was treacherous. But then eventually the bone moved to some spot in my knee where I didn't even notice it. And then within a few months, it's like it never had happened. And I've been fine since. And so as of right now, I know, cause I already know the situation. I've had two cadaver, so let me tell you, with those five surgeries, that included bone chips breaking off before and having to have it removed. And the other surgeries were to have two different, these are two, this is years apart, cadaver grafts inserted into each one of my knees. So I, I have two dead people in me. So I'm super, I feel super, I mean, that counts creepy to some people, but I'm super um, grateful for it that, I mean, so I'm an organ donor and I recommend everyone else be too. I know some that creeps some people out, but like because of those people and who knows who they were and what happened or why they died. And, but like because of them, like I was able to, well, I wanted to go in the military at the time and I was able to do that because of that. I was able to go to Egypt and do other things and squat around. So um, I'm counting my blessings. So anyways, I'll get off that topic. But what's going to suck so bad is that I'm going to be there. I'm going to miss. I'm going all the way, 7,000 miles away. And all the sites I need to get back to, like the Osiris shaft, because I need to film down in the third shaft where they have the tunnel blocked off where Zahi Awasid stood in front of 20 years ago. I need to film that. I need to get, I'm going to miss the base of the Sphinx because our special access on the tour allows you to go down there. So I'm like, you know, that hole in the ass end of the Sphinx, that was what I was going to, I was going to go down there and freaking have this huge long selfie stick and shove my camera down there and like, what's down there? So anyways, um, whatever I'll, but here's the good news next February, March, looking to go back either with Ben of Uncharted X in February or Brian Forrester in March. So, um, it could be worse, right? Um, so let's see here. Lotus 2005. I've, all right, I fly in on the 30th too. I can't wait for this trip. Take it easy on that knee. I know your struggle. Thanks Lotus. It's very nice of you guys. Don't feel bad for me. I'm going to Egypt twice and within a year. So, and I'm not in any pain. So whatever. I'm not, I'm just not going to think about it. Um, yeah, but anyways, guys, so that being said, I don't, I, it might be too late to sign up for our tour. I know we have more than 50 people going um, but if you're looking to do something last minute, it's probably still possible. So go to chemitology.com um, if that's something you're interested in. But if not, Ben from Uncharted X is doing a tour starting on October 16th, two weeks. And so, you know, if, if you going a week from now is too soon, and again, I don't know if it's too late. It probably is, but maybe not. I think on our last tour, there was people that signed up at the last minute and were able to go. So look into it. Like, you know, there's nothing more thrilling in life than doing something on the fly. So, um, that aside, uh, yeah. So next February or March going back, I'll be in full physical health by then. Hopefully. All right. So that's the thing. Hopefully I don't have to have a freaking knee surgery because I know what's going to happen. I'll go to the doctor and they're going to want to do another cadaver graft because I guarantee you that that, well, that's what happened the other time. So I want to avoid that because then I'll be on crutches for months. And anyway, off that topic, there's things to talk about here. And, and, and just, to, I'm seeing more people have, of course, come in here. So there's a lot of things I wanna mention. So to those who didn't just hear me say it, I'm gonna do a full live stream on the Giza Plateau a week from today. Now it's a nine hour time difference from where I'm at here in Phoenix. So realistically, if I'm doing it like, let's say two in the afternoon, we'll do the math, go, go, you know, Google Cairo time, Egypt time. Um, so it'll be in the morning for most Americans. But either way, you'll be able to watch the watch it after if you miss it live. But guys, this has the potential to be the most epic live stream ever, at least in my book, um, because I'm going to take you all over the plateau and walk around and show you all the things that you don't know even exist, or at least that most people don't. You're going to get a 360 view because it's like we've all seen the pyramids and the Sphinx and everything else. But within minutes of me entering the Giza plateau, I was already learning and seeing new things. I'm like, what? Cause it's, there's so much out there and it's thousands of acres. 
Um, so look forward to that. And again, I'll be with Brian Forster on this trip. So even though I won't be there the full time, you'll be with Brian. And, and let me just tell you, I had a wonderful 10 day tour with Brian in Peru. He's a lovely man. He's a true sweetheart is the way to put it. He's a, he has a huge heart. He's super nice. Um, and you guys will love him and he's incredibly knowledgeable. And the tour is also going with Patricia Ayan, which is Yusuf Ayan's, uh, well, ex-wife. I probably not my business to say that incredibly knowledgeable. And she's really into the spiritual aspect of the Egyptians. And she's very informative and has tons to share. And she's a wonderful person. And she's the person that owns the, uh, Kemet school of ancient mysticism. Um, so let's see here, by the way, real quick, leave me a super chat. One of the reasons why I wanted to do this, uh, live stream was to get ideas from you guys on what you want me to film while I'm there on the Giza plateau. Because I'm of course gonna, I'm gonna walk around the pyramids, so you'll see that. You'll get to actually see what they look like when you're up close compared to people. Because you see these pictures of them and you don't realize that like the Great Pyramid of Giza was like a four, the size of a 47 story building. Now with the cap missing, it's like, let's say it's something like 43, 44 stories. But when you see pictures of it, you don't really realize that until you see people next to it and realize like, oh my God, this thing is unbelievably huge. It's so big that when you consider that the base of it is 755 feet wide at each of its base, all, you know, all four sides. Well, then when you also do the math, you realize that that means that from the base of the pyramid to the top is more than 300 feet away from you, from the base to the center. It's unreal. It's so, it's an illusion almost when you look at it. Um, so anyways, let me know what you guys want me to see, but I'm of course gonna circle around the Sphinx. I won't be able to get to the bottom of it. That's a special access thing. Um, but I'm gonna show you the, all through the causeway. I'll be able to show you exactly where the Osiris shaft is. And here's another thing that I'm very excited to show you, which is all of the locked gates um, and, and doors throughout the plateau. It is unreal how much stuff there is to see there that is completely off access to the public. And this tied in, if you guys saw my recent um, survey on, uh, or, or poll that I did on my community uh, board on my, on my channel page, I asked, you know, cause I was wanting to see what you guys want to see next. And so I've been working on this video involving, uh, you know, things that are being, ancient sites that are being kept hidden from the public. And there's several different things that I was gonna include on there. And one of the things that I really, really want to include, and this is like the least of my main points of it, is the locked gates. And I'm not saying it's some big conspiracy or anything like that, but there's stuff that's there that the general public doesn't have access to. And I don't, I want to be able to have access to it. Even if they want to charge me, I'll, I'll pay it. Um, all right. Thank you so much for the super chat. Is it by Zebli? Uh, send a drone down to the smaller tunnels if they will allow it, such as the Sphinx tail hole. Well, that has come to mind. Well, let me just say drones are illegal in Egypt, or at least on the plateau or all around all the ancient sites. Cannot use a drone, period. Um, all right, so let me just be clear. I'm not gonna do it. So to anyone watch, I'm not gonna do it because I don't wanna risk getting arrested in Egypt. But it's not like that hasn't crossed my mind to get like some sort of little remote control car, little you know, camera on it and send it down there. But I'd never be, able, that's the thing. You wouldn't be able to get it back. It drops down that shaft on the back end of the, uh, of the Sphinx. Um, but anyways, let's see. What do you guys want to ask me here? But uh, let me keep going. More people are tuning in. Let's see. So, okay, well, I'll talk about that in a second. Um, but one of the other details talking about these closed sites, to, so to those of you that didn't watch my live stream from after Peru, and, and by the way, I see people asking, where are you, all your videos from Peru? They're coming, guys. I, I've been working on several videos at a time. I've been caught up with other things in life as well. And so the, the intention that I have going on this trip is to just keep my momentum going and come home and become obsessed with making videos again like I once was. When I was making videos on a regular basis, when my channel was taking off, like then it's addicting and you can't stop. And then when you, losing momentum is a real thing. So that's the intention guys, like there's too many videos that I have built up that haven't been finished. And so it's time to just get busy living, isn't it? Um, so look forward to that. But um, what I wanted to say though, like I was just alluding to involving what I mentioned in my last Peru live stream is that Guys, so listen, they're, they're closing, they're in the process of closing Machu Picchu to the public forever. And I'm not kidding here. Um, so when I was there last month, 
If you haven't been to Machu Picchu or if you're not familiar with it, the layout that the most impressive largest stones, all the most impressive structures are at the very, very top. You're no, you're no longer allowed up there. You can only go down the base of it. Like you're on the top of the mountain and there's, it's layered and you know, the structures go up through the layers and the most impressive stuff is at the very top, the various temples, whatever you want to call them. Um, guys, they have guards there. You can't do it. It's access denied. And we asked why and they said, quote, conservation. So they want people up there to conserve the site. I'm like, okay, hold on a second. I am completely on board with conserving ancient sites. Great. But if you're not going to let anyone up there ever, what's the point of conserving it? Guys, you can rope these sites off to prevent you from touching it. They have guards everywhere. And I mean like everywhere. They can stop people from screwing with it because of course there's been vandalism and graffiti that have happened over the years, of course, um, at all these sites all over the world of, too. But um, I'm like, wait a second. So, th so this is what they intend to do over the next couple of years. They intend to completely close all of Machu Picchu to the public and to where you would only be able to see it when you, so you'll take the train to Machu Picchu and you're thousands of feet below at the bottom of the mountain and they want you to do a virtual experience only. I'm not kidding. That's silly. That's stupid. It makes me want to boycott the place, which I'm not suggesting yet. I wouldn't want to do that. I would not want to do that to the lovely people of Peru. Um, but guys, something, this needs to be addressed because this is like, what the fuck is the point of preserving this place if no one's ever going to be allowed to see it ever again? Leave it to the alpacas and the, and the, and the eagles and hawks. What the, what's the point? And, and again, it's been sitting in the blaring hot um, high altitude sun. High altitude sun is something else. You burn it within minutes out there. And the wind and the rain and all the erosion and the elements for thousands of years and it's doing just fine. This is weird. So that's going to tie into that other video because there's a few other things to discuss. Like, for example, like what about uh, Gobekli Tepe? That site was discovered or rediscovered in the early 90s and they're still like, what's, what's the holdup on, on digging this site out? It's still only at like 90% dug out. I made a video on this. One of my first videos on this was in 2016. We're talking five years ago. Nothing's changed. What are they waiting on? What's happening? Um, and I mean, there's other places too. So I don't know guys, I have some real concerns, but that'll make for a fun video. Um, all right, so let me keep going. What do you guys got to ask me here? Let's see here. Oh, let me show you guys my new camera equipment because, okay. So last time I went to Egypt, it's like you live and you learn, right? And a lot of people were making fun comments or funny comments to me. Like when I went into the great pyramid at the, at the end of it and uh, hold on. It's just apple juice. Don't worry about it. So I didn't have a flashlight, right? You got, some of you guys saw that. Well, I did. I just didn't have it on me. And the reason is because we went to the Great Pyramid of Giza hours before I was flying out of the country. And so I had to have all my bags and everything packed up. So I even left my main camera there. It was like, it was the worst time to go to the pyramid. It was too raw. I mean, well, it was a two hour window, but it was rushed in that like I knew that as soon as I left, I'd have a short span to go back to the hotel, change, shower, and get the hell out. So live and learn, but the good news is, is that I have a few things. One, I'm bringing a legit flashlight. This thing's way a bit, well, hold on. <laughs> Why did I do that? This is like 350 lumen. That's a good one, extra batteries. But even more important than that is this sucker. So this is my mirrorless camera. I believe it's the Sony A6600. It's got, uh, this is the wide angle lens. It's phenomenal. And, that, and I got a legit light. It, you can change from different color of the, uh, anyways, this thing's far brighter than you'll be able to tell, but this will make all the difference, especially when I'm down there in the CRPM with the 100 ton stone boxes. Um, yeah, so that's already set up. Look, it's on there, ready to go. No big deal. Um, oh, hold on a second. Andrew, what up, brother? Ancient history criticisms. If you're not su subscribed to him, go, go do it right now. He's got an awesome channel, him and a few other channels are, you know, what Ziggy Dan, uh, Ancient hi uh, hist uh, History View, uh, Alternative View, excuse me, uh, Phil, and, and there's a few others. Um, Sherman, there's all these wonderful people that are, that are really leading the charge on the stone nub phenomenon, which is all over Peru, Egypt, 
dozens of other countries around the world and they're on it. Um, so I said, here's some bakshish for the guards. You bet, brother. Bakshish is Arabic for tips. And tips make a big difference in the country of Egypt. I'll say that. Let me show you also what I, what I got, guys. Well, I do have a selfie stick this time. So this thing will be legit for using with my phone. It's got a control. This, this will be a good thing. That way, I'll, when I do use my phone for some filming, I'll definitely be doing it horizontally. Because last time I was... I filmed in vertical, but let me just say, I was not intending on using those videos on my phone for the internet. And then afterwards, I got home, I'm like, well, I should. You know, these, I got some good shots, but it's like, I was filming in vertical just because I'm holding up my hand, I'm crawling through these sites, you have to be able to do stuff and live and learn, guys. But anyways, but that's not what I intend to use for filming, because what I invested in is the G DGI uh, Osmo 2. This thing is badass. This is a 4K, 60 frame per second, wide angle video and photo. Um, and this thing is outstanding. Ben from Uncharted X has one. And if you've seen his videos, the awesome video quality he has, he's using just this little, this little tiny thing is unbelievably high quality. And I got with it an outstanding wireless Bluetooth microphone. So I'll be using this around the ancient sites as well. This will make a phenomenal difference in the quality of the videos of my channel. Something else I have, which is nice nerdy, although you're not supposed to use them in Egypt, but I got a little laser pointer. Should I point, I don't wanna point that at my camera, it'll probably break something. What's useful about this is that it helps you to see the quality of uh, the precision of the stonework. You basically flash it along the side of the, of the stone and you see, you'll be able to appreciate how flush it is in any little blemishes or bumps along the way, this will help you see it. There was a few gentlemen, uh, I believe it was Mark from, um, where was he from? Was it Sweden or, I believe Switzerland. I could be wrong. Mark, miss you brother. Anyways, he had brought one on the Egypt trip last year and it was, it was awesome to see that thing. Uh, so I'm gonna bring that to the Serapium and show you guys the precision of that bad boy. Oh my goodness. Kevin Brown, $50 super chat, thank you. He, all right, so he says, I want to see the polygonal masonry at the foot of the Great Pyramid, also the, uh, the black basalt or whatever is left of it. Thank you. So yes, I already had that in mind when I was doing my live stream. I'm like, I'm going to show the polygonal stonework. So the whole uh, foundation surrounding the Great Pyramid is all polygonal flooring. It is, and some of these blocks are huge. We're talking 10, 15 feet wide and all polygonal interlocked. That is going to be a sweet shot. And then you have the black basalt, um, I, I believe it's basalt, polished foundation that's to the left or is it west of the pyra Great Pyramid? It's right there though. And then you guys be able to see like just how gnarly this stuff is. And then at that same spot, you'll be able to see evidence of ancient stone cutting, which is pretty unreal. Um, thank you very much, Kevin. That's a very generous uh, super chat. Um, and I don't want you guys to feel like you have to give me money. So let's see, let me scroll through these, um, some of these comments. That's Andrew. That's right, Jimmy. What? Thanks, brother. Um, Andrew, you got to get to freaking Egypt. So we all need to talk. Like, I think we needed to do a, a big group of YouTubers or whoever uh, early next year, February, March or something. I, I think it would be a great thing. And I think we'd all get along lovely in person too. Um, all right. A headband LED light would work good. So I, I was considering that. And maybe I will. I already have one. Um, but yeah, because like lighting is really important. And let me also say that this particular camera with this wide angle lens is outstanding for low light. It did very well for uh, the pictures I did take while there. But having this light, because I already tested it like a nerd. I went into my garage at night and <laughs> did some experiments. And it's like, it was it, light as, as day. Um, let's see here. History with Kaylee, hi. Thank you so much, by the way. She says, are you going to film the causeway and possible fourth pyramid locations that ancient architects covered in video uh, three days ago? All right, I didn't see that video, by the way. Um, the, but the causeway, absolutely. I'm, guys, let me just clarify here and to everyone that's just tuning in right now. I'm going to do a live stream a week from today on October 1st, Friday. And I'm gonna do the whole shebang. It'll probably take me a couple hours to walk around this site. Well, easily, actually. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna show you the causeway and that's another thing. You'll be able to see just the precision of the causeway itself, uh, you know, what it once was. I'm going to show you on the sides of it. So you, you'll be able to see, like, guys, there's tunnels under the causeway. That's how you get to the Osiris shaft. There's like this hole that goes right under the causeway. And then, and then when you're right here, 
then it goes down. It's unbelievable. Um, let's see here. Uh, but hey guys, if you're not following History with Kaylee's channel, go do it right now. It's exploding right now. She's, I think she's doubled or tripled her following in the last like less than two weeks or something. And it's such a great channel. And she's just starting too. Um, so she'll be a, she'll be a superstar in no time. She's sharing all kinds of cool stuff. And I think it's just the beginning. Um, let's see here. Let me look at some of these other comments. Guys, there's so many. I'm so grateful. Let's see here. Um, let's see. All right, Andrew, uh, the Osiris bottom level has a tunnel running toward the Great Pyramid. Yes, that's what I'm saying. So that's what I'm going to miss since I won't be there when they go in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to partner with someone there on the tour. And maybe I'll actually, I was thinking about buying some, those fishing trousers that people use when they're fly fishing and you can go up to your waist because the bottom level of the Osiris shaft is completely flooded. It's like up to your waist. But in there, there was a tunnel that extended. Zahi Awas had a documentary in the late 90s when they were exposing the Osiris shaft. And he's standing in front of the tunnel and saying, it goes this way, but we haven't explored it yet, which is so silly. Like, oh, okay. You just didn't bother to walk down to see what was down there? I'm like, that's the, no, like I, that's not even believable for a second. So, but apparently, since like Brian Forrester had been there a few years ago, they've sealed it up with blocks. All I want is a picture of the sealed tunnel. Never mind what's on their side of it. I mean, of course, that's an unbelievably important thing to discuss. But it's long been known and said that there's an advanced tunnel network underneath the plateau. And that would be evidence of it. And it's sealed. I just want a picture of the sealed tunnel. That's all I want. That's the reason why I haven't finished this video where I was going to talk about exposing hidden places because I'm like, I need to get back to Egypt and take pictures of some of these other places. Just like at the CRPM, when I was, you know, with the 100 ton stone boxes, when I was there in December of last year, the, the gentleman running the facility says, according to him, that there's a whole other tunnel of additional boxes, maybe a dozen, I can't remember the number, but a whole other tunnel they discovered and in the process of excavating it. Now, I, I don't know if that's true. I don't have any, I don't think he was like making it up or anything. I just didn't see it with my own eyes and I don't know where that doorway is that gets there. Um, he sure didn't volunteer that at all, by the way. He was speaking in confidence, um, but he was, a, he was a gentleman. In fact, he could, he's the same guy, oh, hold on. He's one of the same people, because there was a few, that caught me. I don't know if you, guys, if you, let me just say real quick, if you're not following me on Instagram, I mean, Instagram, all social media is trash, guys, but it's kind of an important thing to grow. So if you're not following me on Instagram, go find me there. It's, it's bright underscore insight. And the reason I point that out is because I made a funny post last year when I got home of me breaking the rules at the CRPM. I'm standing on the boxes and I climbed down below and went into them when I wasn't supposed to. Don't get mad at me, guys. I'm not hurting these boxes. The reason why it's a rule is because people have fallen down and broken their legs and stuff. That's my right to go break my own legs. And I know some people, and I point this out because some people got very upset with me. Like, why are you climbing on this stuff? It's not yours. I'm like, because I needed the shot, guys. I want to show you guys this stuff. So where I was going with it is that like, he's one of the people that caught me standing on the box and I had that posted on my Instagram, but he was a complete sweetheart. Keep in mind, I did tip him. I gave him like 20 US dollars, which uh, uh, the Cairo pound or, or dollar, yeah, I believe it's Egyptian pound, it's 15 to one US. So that 20 bucks goes a long way in Egypt. Um, so yeah, I need the shot and I'm not gonna stop doing it like until I get kicked out of that country, which I won't guys, I'm respectful. Like I'm, everything I'm doing, there's other people filming me. I'm not, I just, people need to know this stuff. And, and let me just say, I'm helping to grow Egyptian tourism. Me promoting this stuff is helping people to sign up that otherwise wouldn't have gone. And I think I should probably reach out and partner with the antiquities department to do some sort of collaboration to maybe they'll take me someplace that's normally off limits. And, and, and I'm, I'm essentially, because I've said this in other videos, I tell people, don't bother going to ancient Rome or Greece right now. I mean, yeah, go there. Those are wonderful places. I haven't been, I can't wait to go. But you need to go to Egypt. And so many people don't go to Egypt because they're afraid, they're like, oh, you know, is it safe? You know, I don't know. Uh, it's very safe. And let me tell you, it, the vibe of the place is wonderful. The people are unbelievably friendly, but not only that, it is Egyptian law that all tours must be accompanied by the tourism police and military. You literally have armed escorts in front and back of the bus with lights and sirens, men with machine guns, and they follow you everywhere because the last thing Egypt needs is an incident. It's happened before years ago. There was an incident with some Vietnamese bus and that, 
tourism is everything for Egypt. And they're not messing around. It's a very modern country. And just the temple or the people themselves, I, I put it this way, I felt far safer there than I, than I would in many places here, even in Phoenix or New York or other places. Chicago, my God. Um, all right, so hold on. Let me just shout out some of these. Oh, I just missed a super chat. It was $4.99 from somebody. Dang it, I'm so sorry. I didn't even see who it was. I'm sorry. I hate missing that. Um, whoever it was, I want to say thank you. I'll be able to read the comment afterwards, though. When I shut down the stream, I'll be able to. It's all archived. So here's Obi-Wan. Great name, by the way. Happy to catch a live. Can you please tell me what was the best thing you saw in when you served in terms of moments? Well, I mean, when I deployed to Iraq uh, in 2009 and 10, I had the extremely rare opportunity to see those ancient, um, I call them Sumerian bulls, uh, the, the, are the Lamassu. They're actually, um, well, they're supposed to be Assyrian. I suspect they're older, and the reason why I say that is because you gotta look at the nature and how they were found, and they were all found buried in mud, like many feet below the surface. And I'm like, if there's supposed to be a continuity between the Sumerians and the Assyrians, which is supposed to be essentially, you know, change in governments and leadership and, you know, royalty or whatever. What, the reason why I think they're older is because I think it's evidence of the cataclysm. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe, and, and the Sumerians came way after the cataclysm. So I don't even know what I think other than that. I just suspect that they're a lot older because these things are so big and massive that if there was continuity between the Sumerians and the Assyrians, why would they... Well, were they just abandoned and left to just be covered in dirt over many, many hundreds of years or whatever? I just, I think they're older in the precision of the granite and quartzite um, nature of them um, and, and, and the precision, all the details. I'm like, to me, it looks like evidence of a some sort of lost technology. And, and, and let me just say, technology, guys, this, this is where people get so carried away. It doesn't have to be power tools, guys. Technology, technology can be a horse saddle. You know, technology is anything that you utilize as a tool to help you do something else easier. So I just think that there was some capability they had that has since gone. How old and how advanced is the debatable part? But um, yeah, to answer your question, Obi-Wan, it's, it's those bulls, man, because now they're all gone. ISIS came in there and literally took um, those, uh, those hammers, what do you call them, the stupid construction things, and they, they, they obliterated them. They got heavy equipment and smashed through them and they're gone. And these things were epic. They were like 15 feet tall. And I only got to see it one day by complete happenstance. So I was military police and what we were doing when I was in my year in Iraq, Iraq was, a, we did a number of things. One was training the Iraqi police. So we'd go to back and forth from different Iraqi police stations to give them supplies, train them, other things. We'd do escorts. We did some other things. Um, and it was pretty fun to be honest. Although. Don't get me going. I'm completely anti-war now. I think the invasion of Iraq was a complete crime against humanity. I believe it was a total lie. I, I know it was, but we don't need to get into that. The veterans themselves, we did what we were supposed to do and we believe something and um, some of the best people I ever met in my life. So that's a touchy subject. I don't want to get going. I've, done, I've gone down this route, rabbit hole before with other people. And anyways, um, but anyways, it was one day. It was, out, it was just in uh, Mosul and we were at an Iraqi police station that was directly across the street from it, and we had been going there for a little while, and we had seen these, this ancient site. It was the Gate of Nergal. You should Google it. Gate of Nergal. It's allegedly where Jonah, from the Bible, after he escaped the whale, it's the exact spot he was said to have gone. How wild is that? And, and when you were there, you just knew you are in the presence of something amazing. There's this huge ramp to go up, and you're like, how many, what history was here, you know? Um, all right, hold on. I don't want to miss this super chat. Um, Wilhelmina Dutch, forgive me if I mispronounce that. Me near Tooth's grave. I don't, is that a picture of you? I'm going to have to, how do I, it's not letting me, how do I view your profile? Um, it's not letting me, I'll have to follow up on that later, but thank you for the, for the super chat. Um, what other questions do you all have? Let's see here. We got 850 people watching. That's wonderful. Thank you all. Um, happy Friday. To those of you that are new to this, I know, to those that have been tuned in, you're going to hear me say a couple of things, same things over and over again because new people are tuning in. But uh, a week from today, October, Friday, October 1st, I will be doing a complete live stream on the Giza Plateau and I'm going to cover everything. It's going to be wild. I'm going to show you all the amazing sights around it and I think it's going to be like something you haven't seen before. You're going to see it as if you were there. 
And I haven't seen someone do that. I mean, I've seen Brian Forrester do some live streams down there, but it's been brief, like minutes just around certain sites. I'm gonna, I have this, I bought this brick phone charger and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna go as long as I can. I, I should have good service. If I get interrupted and it falls out, I'll just restart that sucker all up again. It's gonna be a good time. Um, let's see here. Philip W. Her, uh, have you ever heard, excuse me, have you ever had a sketchy moment traveling as a civilian? Um, no, the sketchiest moment would be, and I'm pretty, to be honest with you, I'm pretty on guard when I travel. I have my wits about me. I don't let anyone come up from behind me. Uh, no one's ever gonna pickpocket me, good luck with that. In fact, I keep my wallet in my front pocket when I travel, as opposed to at home, I'll have it in my back pocket. And I just, I just kind of put on this face like, so you guys are gonna see it actually. You're gonna see it on the plateau because there are so many sharks over there. Like I said a moment ago, the people of Egypt are wonderful. But then you have the scammers and the thieves and the, and the manipulators around the pyramids that are trying, they're so shicey, some of these people. They're trying to get you to buy stuff or take your money, rip you off in different ways. And they are aggressive. They won't leave you alone, they'll come up. And I'm Mr. Nice Guy, guys. I, I, you know, if someone wants to talk to me, I'll acknowledge them, I don't like to ignore them. Like someone come up and talk to you and some people will just ignore them. Like don't give them any attention. And I'm like, oh, that's a human being. I like to at least look them in the eye and say, no, thank you. And then I realize if you're a nice guy and you got a nice little smile like Jimmy and it's like, oh, you know, Mr. Nice, you know, they take kindness for weakness and they'll prey on you. So you guys will see it. Eventually you have to kind of put your guard up and be like, you know, no. Get back, you know, like, you know, fuck off. <laughs> um, so the sketchiest moments to answer your question would probably be something like that. But um, I mean, I haven't had any late nights out in like sketchy parts of other countries or anything. I'm pretty smart when it comes to that stuff. No one's gonna get their one up on me. Um, someone just give me 500, is that check? Is CZK check? Let me, uh, let me Google this. One second. CZK currency, I believe that's, Oh, yep, yeah, check, there we go. Thank you so much, Mary Trice, or Tris. Thank you very much, there's no comment, she just, it's a tip. All right, I'm gonna, hey, that month, those funds are gonna go towards um, bribing people on the plateau, hopefully. All right, let's see here, what else, we got some other comments here. By the way, my apple juice, but. All right, all right, Jimmy trying to be Harrison Ford in real life, LOL, Viper Chief. Yeah, I mean, why not? <laughs> to be honest, like, because you guys have all seen me in that hat from you and being in Egypt and Peru. So that kind of happened by accident. I bought that hat while in Denver at an REI in 2018. This is way before I ever thought I was going to Egypt. And I bought it because it looked so cool and the friends I was with at the time, like, Jimmy, like, I just saw it, like, it was there. I was like, how's this hat look? Because I don't even wear hats anymore. I used to wear, like, baseball caps growing up and everything, but I haven't worn hats in years, at least not since the military. Or like make you as part of your uniform. And my friend's like, dude, that's a legit hat. You should get that. And it was only 50 bucks. I'm like, all right. And then it sat, I didn't wear it once for two years. And then it wasn't until I was going with Ben of Uncharted X to Egypt last year that I was like, this is it. I should bring this hat. Cause you gotta wear a hat out there. You gotta keep the sun off your ears. Anyway, um, so yeah, people are like leaving comments ever since then. Like, look at this Indiana Jones and all that. I'm like, yeah, Indiana Jimmy. Thanks, uh, Grimm's daughter. Um, all right, let's see here. Who else has a question or comment? And let me look at my list here. I got things I want to talk about. Yeah, to all the new people tuning in, I got great equipment for doing lives. Uh, I got great lighting this time. And yeah, I'm gonna get the shot. The only, the crappiest part is that I won't be there for the full time and the places that I need to go most, I won't be going back to, which is a sh real shame, especially since I'll be right there. But I'm in kind of dire circumstances. I even bought a collapsible cane in case I have an emergency where the, because here's the deal. If that knee locks up, it, depending on how that goes, it might require emergency surgery. So I've already talked to the Kemet School, the people that are running the tour, and they have a doctor contact and all this. So like worst case scenario, <laughs> I'll have a discounted surgery in Egypt. I don't want to believe that'll happen. Because right now, guys, I'm walking around fine. I don't even have a limp. It's like nothing had happened. It's not till I go upstairs or I bend my leg, or I go to squat, or put my shoe on and like, you know, bending my leg, that then it feels like that bone's gonna get in there. But other than that, it doesn't hurt at all. You know, so, but I'll bring in that collapsible cane in my suitcase just in case. Um, who is it? 
Steven, do you have OnlyFans? I do not. I probably should. I should probably like do a shirtless pyramid talks, right? Get all you, get all you horn dogs, give me some money. No, I'm never gonna do that. Um, let's see here. Is there a location on this trip that you didn't get to see last time? Well, yes, but I won't see it, which is at the base of the Sphinx, within the paws and down in there. Because how they have it now is that that's a special access permission. You can only go up all on the top of the enclosure now, unless you pay the fee. So this tour does include that. Everyone coming will be able to go down in there. Um, I will not, um, but that is, which is a freaking shame too. Um, hey, hang on a second. I'm just gonna turn on my AC. It's right there. Let's only take about five seconds. One second. All right, how are we doing? Um, yeah, and it looks like, now here's the thing. Like I was just saying that if you wanna make this trip, there's probably still time. Maybe it's not, it doesn't hurt to send the Kemet School an email. But if you were to be interested in going in mid-October on the 16th, Ben from Monochard X is doing a tour and they are gonna go down into the depths of the Step Pyramid of Saqqara, which is one of the most impressive sites I've ever seen in my life. Before when I was studying Egypt, I didn't think anything of Saqqara. I mean, it's, both, it's said to be the first pyramid. That may or may not be true. But this place, when you're inside of it, is unbelievable. There's this huge shaft that just plummets down and it's wild. It's, it's one of the most curious sights I had seen. It blew my mind. And guys, he's going down in there. So keep that in mind if that's something you want to do. Here's someone out, Trist, wow, haha, ha, OnlyFans. You guys are like, so I've never even been to OnlyFans website. What is that? I know it's like people you just, you know, be topless or whatever and um, yeah, I'm not doing it. All you guys are commenting on this. Jimmy is way too cool to be doing it. That's right, I am, I'm not doing it. Like, can you imagine those pictures? First of all, I'm not in the, I'm not doing that. It's, a, I guess it's not porn or what is, I don't even know why I'm talking about this. It's funny though, you guys are hilarious. Kevin Brown, thank you. That's a very generous uh, super chat. Osirion Temple. Now, I will be missing that again. That is on this tour. The good news is that when I was there last year, I got, I took like 500 photos there. I have every angle of that entire structure covered. So that will be great for in future videos because I don't, I mean, I want to go back in there. It was one of the most impressive sites I've ever seen in my life. But like, thank God I already, I, that's one of the places that I properly documented this, this last time. I mean, I really got the shot. Thank God. Um, cause that's a blessing guys. That, that right there is like something like two, I, I, I don't know the exact number. I heard it was somewhere between two and $4,000 to rent out that site. Cause now in the Assyrian, you can't get down in there unless you have special access permission. And so let's say 3000, whatever it was. So you guys, that's the benefit of going on these tours. You have access to the special permission. So like you could go to Egypt for so cheap. You could get like a, you know, $800 flight and, and you could spend probably a thousand dollars in country and, and see a bunch of stuff. However, so the, some of the best places are special access, which costs thousands. So when you go on a big tour, it's divided up. So yeah, you might spend six grand on a tour for two weeks, which I mean, it includes hotel and almost all the meals as well as the convenience of everyone doing everything for you. That's another thing. You have people that live there that speak the language and know how to grease everything and, and, and get you by in a way that if you went alone, you might, because <laughs> I know people that have gone there on their own and got ripped off on all kinds of things, even taking taxis and stuff. Like it's, so it's worth it if you can afford it, but you can do things on your own for cheaper. That's, you know, that's something to keep in mind. But okay, Meznet says, what's your opinion on Graham Hancock's Egyptian theories? If true, why would the powers that be covered up? Well, I don't know specifically what you mean. I mean, if I was to say what his theories are overall, it would seem to me that, you know, he, and I'm not speaking for him, but my, what I, my impression is that, from studying him, of course, is that he believes that, look, the ancient Egyptians were likely older and more mysterious and advanced than what we were taught. I'm not, I'm not saying he thinks that the pyramids are way, way older. I've heard him suggest different things. But I th I, here's what I think. It's one of two things. Either many or some of these sites, let's say, are far older, and the reason why we don't have the interest is because the evidence has since gone away because we're talking many thousands of years older than we thought, or what we thought we understood about the so-called dynastic Egyptians of 4,000 or so years ago is far 
more mysterious than what we thought or that what our understanding of the Egyptians of 4,000 or so years ago is far different than what we thought. And since then, the evidence has been, you don't have to even say covered up, just gone because Egypt has been rat fucked. I mean, you're talking about Alexander the Great went through there. The Caesars went through there. The, the Persians, like, I mean, this place has been completely, for the last few thousand years, so much has happened there that we can't even properly appreciate or understand. And the evidence is gone because people, what do you think people were doing there? They were being people, touching stuff and breaking shit and stealing things and things rusting away or God knows what else. Um, but to answer your question about Graham Hancock, I think he's right about far more things than he could possibly be wrong about. I'm not saying he's wrong about anything. I'm not, nothing comes to mind. I'm just saying that like every single one of us, whether it's Nikola Tesla or, or, or Einstein has been wrong about, actually probably I could argue wrong about more things than they were right about. Um, but I, Graham Hancock is one of my biggest inspirations. I love him. I want to meet him. Um, I think he's a complete gentleman. He's way ahead of his time. The backlash he has gotten is from people that are complete, they have no imagination and, and are, are so, God bless their hearts, but it's like they just, it's like they believed everything they read in some textbook and didn't ask a single question. And it's like, how do you know this? You know, so I don't know. I don't know if that answered your question, but because um, I'm trying to think of something specific that one of his theories that you would um, be referring to. I mean, I'm right here on the spot. I'm trying to think, but um, let's see here. Um, yeah, this is a great point, Dominic Johnson. There were at least 26 dynasties before Alexander the Great. You guys know what a dynasty is? It's like, it's like 10 or so pharaohs. It's 26 of them. So we're talking a few thousand years. Like, pfft, there's so much time that's transpired between the time the pyramids were alleged to have been built. For example, and I've heard other people make this point before, and I'll make it again, which is that Cleopatra is closer to us than she is to the Great Pyramid of Giza, Egypt, assuming it was built somewhere around 4,500 years ago. Think about that. Guys, this is... We don't understand Egypt. I'm not saying we don't understand anything. I'm not saying everything's wrong. People get so carried away. Um, but yeah, I, if you want to know what I honestly think, yeah, I think it's older and more advanced than we were taught. How advanced? I don't know. How old? I don't know. I have ideas. Hey, come, come to Egypt with me and I'll, I'll you know, give me a beer and I'll, I'll really open up. That, so guys, that's one of the funnest things about going on these tours is just how open-minded people are. You have people from all over the world, many people on the same opinion on a lot of things, whether it's political or things going on in the world, conspiratorial or whatever. Not all, but everyone is on this vibe of open-mindedness and everyone gets along. And you'll never make friends so fast either. I'm, I've made friends from Peru and Egypt that I'll be in contact with for the rest of my life. We're talking great people. And, and the fun part about traveling at a time like this is that you're with open-minded people that are willing to travel when the world is so crazy, right? Um, Hi, Diddy. I just saw your comment. Pyramids under the sand. Hi, Diddy. You're wonderful. Um, Lego Master. Love your work. Keep it up. Be safe. God bless you. God bless you, Lego Master. That's very nice of you. All right. Let's see another. Um, Cyberdoc. Can you bring us back a box of saltwater taffy? If I don't eat them all, and how am I going to get them to you? But yes. Um, what other questions you guys have? Super chats were great because they catch my eye, but I don't want you guys to expect to have to give me money to ask me a question. So I'm looking right now. Come on, someone ask me something. I'm, just, I'm looking at the chat. It's almost a thousand people here. This is pretty awesome. Jimmy, what are your thoughts about aliens, the moon, and Bob Lazar? Okay, so <laughs> I, love it. I love this question because I think about it a lot. Okay. A number of things. Yes, I do believe that aliens have visited Earth. I, I think it's extremely likely. I think they're probably being monitored right now. I think that the moon, if you look at... <laughs> All right, let me say a couple things. I don't even know where to begin on this. I've said this before and I'll say it again. I strongly suspect that humans are a hybrid species. If you go to not just biblical texts, but from various religious texts from multiple continents around the world, and you replace words like, you know, angels, demons, sky gods, whatever, and, and were to say, use the word alien today, I think things would make sense. They all talk about someone breeding with the women here, guys. What the hell are they talking about? And then you have humans. I have no doubt related to apes in some way. I mean, we have the same exact hair count as like the, uh, as the, the great ape. 
um, you know, like for our head, um, DNA and other things are very, very similar, but not exact, obviously. Um, and we don't assimilate with our environments at all. We're like this cancer spot on Earth. Like, go look at a city from space, and it looks like a cancer blob. It really does. Um, you know, we need shoes and sh clothes. Like, we're all, you know, everything else on Earth just assimilates, and we don't. And on top of it, we're crazy. We're just destroying ourselves all the time, and like, just we're mad. I, I, I look at us as like this, like this poor example of a mixed dog breed that, that, I mean, some mixed dog breeds are the best ever, but like there are without a doubt examples of mixed species out there that are just clearly not meant to work out. So going back to the moon though, there are unanswered questions about the moon and I don't want to like mention his name because I haven't heard this directly, but I know people that went and saw Randall Carlson recently. He's given these talks. Um, and apparently his thoughts on the moon are quite interesting. I don't want to speak for him. I wasn't there in person, but I will say that if you go watch my video on the moon and other things, I will, I shouldn't even say his name because it, well, I will, but it doesn't mean that I agree with every single thing he said. This is how stupid people are now is that if you mention one person's name, like, but he said this, this and that, so you can't listen to anything. Shut up. People are wrong about things, right? And I'm not mentioning anything he's wrong about, but I will say this, David Icke's thoughts on the moon, things that he has shared in his books, which is just an accumulation of research from other people like Russian scientists and others. It is very possible that the moon is somewhat artificial in that it has been hollowed out and is, a, is an example of intelligent design. And without me mentioning other people's names, because it probably won't be appropriate for me to speak on their behalf, but there's other extremely smart, credible people out there, from what I hear, have the same opinion, but they're careful on what they share publicly. And guys, it's wild. Like, it, there's so many things about it that are unbelievably different from any moon in our understanding of the solar system or any research we've done from any other observed satellite moons in solar systems you know, far away. I know that sounds wild, it sounds crazy to people the first time they hear it, but if you really dig into it, it, it kind of, it's, it's possible is all I'm saying. And, and if you saw my moon video from a year and a half ago, or whatever it was, all I'm saying is that we should go back there and I wanna see some really good eight, you know, 4K video. That's all, that, that's all, that's all I'm asking. I mean, China's on the dark side of the moon right now and you don't hear anything about that. What are they doing? Apparently they're like trying to grow vegetables there and mushrooms and crap. You hear about this? That's mainstream news, by the way. Most people have never heard that. There are things happening on the moon that we are not aware of. Meanwhile, there's this huge space race between Russia, China, and the United States to go mine the moon for precious metals and other elements that are rare on earth or just worthy of, of, uh, worth a lot of money. You, you don't hear anything about it anymore, do you? They're doing it. They're, they're in the process of trying to make that happen right now. You don't hear anything. Nothing to see here. Meanwhile, everyone just watches the news all day long, and whatever's the, 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 the mainstream headline at that time is all they focus on. And then you, they lose track of all these other things that are happening behind the scenes. So, something fun to think about. <laughs> Don't get me going. Go watch that video, because there's been lights observed from the moon. Some people say, well, that's, you know, those are from the mirrors they put up there on the Apollo missions. No, there was lights observed hundreds of years ago and thousands of years ago on the moon. This has been documented. There's thousands of cases. This is real. And NASA has documented this in, in extensive uh, uh, documentation of what I'm trying to say. It's real. It's called transient lunar phenomena. It's a real thing. Right before the Apollo 11, the day before the Apollo 11 astronauts landed on the moon for the first time ever, uh, Houston had radio to them say, hey, we are observing this green fluorescent lighting on this crater on this, you know, corner of the moon, blah, blah, blah. Immediately, Michael Collins radioed back and says, we're observing it now, blah, blah, blah. Green light on the surface of the moon. So out of all the things you heard from the Apollo missions, how many people are aware that they saw a freaking light on the moon before they landed? Isn't that like a front page headline itself? You guys, this is document. This isn't like hearsay. This is NASA records. This is a real thing. It's unexplained. So what was it? I mean, there are theories. I mean, oh, it's gas and da da da. But that's another thing. So why is there gas escaping from the moon? There's seismic activity happening. It's supposed to be a dead planet. All right, hold on. Michael Wiggins, what are your opinions as to uh, as far as the safety or risk for non-straight tourists in the Middle East? I've only heard bad stories. People exaggerate. Okay, here's the deal. All right, if you want to be completely honest, and this is from my own experience in Egypt as well as in the military being trained on certain things. So here's the deal. 
In many Mideast countries, yes, it is socially unacceptable to be homosexual. But there are many people that are, but just, you know, better off being DLL about it, I guess. Um, but I will say this, and this is, guys, I've heard this directly, okay? Like, you know, there is many people, there are many more people that are homosexual there than most people are aware, and many of the people that are against it are homosexual themselves. They're just trying to not have religious conflicts and things with their parents. Um, put it this way, if I, look, I think people should just be themselves. Like, if I was gay, I would, I'd probably be Mr. Proud about it and just wait for somebody to cross my path and mess with me. Like, you know, I'd be the guy that punch their lights out or, or try or die trying because I'm like, for somebody to hate on you for that, it's like, that's no different than being racist. Like, you're born gay. Like, you don't just decide to be gay, right? So it's like, for someone, it's like no different than someone calling up, going up to a black person and saying the N-word. That's the way I see it. Um, and so that's just stupid. But, but we all know, like, it's still a taboo thing in much of the world. It's becoming far more socially acceptable out, you know, and especially in the States and the Western world, but it's still kind of a thing in some places, like, hence you're asking, right? I don't know whereabouts you live, but what I will say is this. I have no doubt that there, that there was, I mean, I'm assuming some homosexuals uh, on my trip to Egypt, they were, there was no issue there. I don't remember them, like, going on dates or anything, but, like, the point is, is that I don't think you'll have any issue. Why would you? But maybe if, it might be smart not to, like, be too out there about it either, but either way, if you're on a tour, there ain't nothing gonna happen to you. One, you're gonna be with a huge group of people that will be looking after you, plus you have the tourism police. And three, like, the people out there aren't that bad, guys. Like, I don't know. I hope that answers your question, but I guess if I had to give you a straight answer, a straight answer, no pun, um, there's, you have nothing to worry about. Um, so, let's see here. Oh, let me just remove that mean comment from this mean person. Let me see if I can block them forever, too. Um, yep, blocked. Um, I don't know why somebody would come to my channel if they don't have something nice to say. It's like, hey, go somewhere else. There's plenty of other things to talk about uh, or other people to hear things from. Uh, but anyways, um, so what else do you guys want to talk about? Let's see here. Let me look at my list. Um, oh, I want to talk to you guys about the tour itinerary. People were asking earlier about where we're going. So here we go. Day one, October 1st. And this will give you guys an idea, especially if you're thinking about going on a tour, you'll understand how it works. So for a 14-day tour, this is how it goes down. It officially begins on Friday, October 1st at 6 p.m. People are meeting at the hotel, and we're doing an introductory dinner and meet and greet. You have everyone meet up in a big circle, and everyone, there's an introduction from the tour host, you know, explain a bunch of things about what to expect while we're there and all that. And essentially... They, everyone will go around and just briefly introduce themselves. Like, you know, hey, here's who I am, where, you know, where I'm from, why I decided to come here, here's what I'm open, open to discover, and just share anything they want. And it's so awesome. It's a great icebreaker. Some people are shy speaking in front of others, but by the end of it, you feel great. And everyone's so welcoming and supportive. Um, so there's that. And we'll have an excellent dinner. And then Saturday the 2nd, we're going to go tour the Giza Plateau. So maybe I'll do another live stream there. Depends how it's going down. People will probably want to chat. So that's why I want to do it Friday before the tour starts while I'm in the Giza Plateau and I have my own time. So we're going to go around, but we're not going into the pyramids. That's at the end of the tour, which is why I'm going to miss that again. Um, but we're also going to visit um, the Valley Temple, which is in front of the Sphinx. It's one of the more impressive sites in all of Egypt. It's very similar to the Assyrian. So I'll get to see that. And then we're having dinner. And then on October 3rd, Sunday, we were, were going to... Okay, so the Grand Egyptian Museum was supposed to have already been opened last year. They keep pushing it back because of COVID and all this other stuff. But So that's not open yet. But it's like, I don't remember. I want to say it's like a million square feet. It's right in front of the Great Pyramid. One of, I believe, I could be wrong, but I believe, if I remember right, it's going to be one of the biggest museums ever built. Unbelievable. It's not open yet. So instead, we're going to go back to the Cairo Museum, which is where I was last year. But I have no complaints because that was one of the coolest buildings I've ever been in. It's built in like 1905. It's huge, marble flooring, must be four stories tall. I mean, it's two stories, but it's so grand. It's huge. And, and it's, there's, it's so big and there's so much in it that you could literally spend weeks in there. I was in there for four hours and I didn't see everything. Amazing. So we're going there and, um, oops, I'm sorry. That's on Monday, I, I, I missed. 
Sunday, which is when we're going to Saqqara to go into the Pyramid of Unis, the Unis Pyramid, which is the only pyramid in Egypt that has any type of inscriptions in it. But it's clearly not original because it's on plaster that was put over the stone. The stonework is unbelievably impressive. And then you have this still impressive, but not anywhere near on the level of, um, of uh, glyphs that are essentially carved into plaster that was put over it. So we'll see that and be in Saqqara, and then from there go into the Serapium. The 100-ton stone boxes, all 24 of them, I believe. Um, and then, hold on one second, let me just double check the chat because I was, hold on here, I was clicked off this link. I'll go back to reading more of the schedule in a second. I just don't want to miss any super chats. What are you guys asking me here? While you're there, will you be taking pictures of the worldwide polygonal masonry? you damn right. A whole bunch of them, too. Uh, pictures. I'm, I'm going to be filming this live stream, guys. You're going to see it with your own eyes. Um, guys, look at this guy. Uh, uh, oops. Oh, my God. Guys, don't get into politics on here in the chat, you silly people. Come on, guys. We're all here because we have this one thing in common, which is this awesome uh, fascination with the ancients. So hold on to that. Otherwise, you could spend your whole life just finding things to disagree with people on. Anyway, so on Monday the 4th is when we're going to the museum, and that's when the rest of the group is flying down to Luxor, and then I'm going to the hotel, or the airport hotel, and I fly out the next morning. What a shame. But here's what everyone else is doing. On October 5th, Tuesday, they are going to Dendera, and they're going to the, hot, the Temple of Hator, which is maybe my most favorite place in all of Egypt. It is spectacular. It, uh, there was people that I know that went, that met multiple people that have been to the Sistine Chapel, which is amazing. I have not been personally. But they said that this place like literally eclipsed it. The, the stonework, the paintings on the top, it's unbelievable and it has a really good vibe to it. Um, so they're going there. And then, let's see here. Forgive me. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Okay, the, on Wednesday the 6th, they're going to the Temple of Seti in the Assyrian. It's going to be amazing. That, the, oh God, I missed this. Assyrian is one thing, amazing. And the Temple of Seti actually really surprised me. I love that place. And by the way, there's evidence all over, to the, over there of, of the Egyptians doing DMT with, through the lotus flower. Facts. Something I didn't know until it was there. But once you see it and have other people explain it to you, zero doubt in my mind, 100%. The Egyptians were doing DMT on the regular, 100, 100%. Um, the good news is I have tons of pictures from that, so I'll make a video on that at some point um, and explain my own DMT experience. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, because I'm looking here on the itinerary, geologist Susan Moore is going to be there on the trip. I'm forgive I haven't met her yet. I've seen so many videos with her with Brian Forrester. Incredibly smart woman, been doing this her whole life, and a complete expert in stonework in geology. Wonderful person to have go, and she's very open-minded, so can't wait to meet her. Uh, what a treat. All right, so on the 9th, that next Saturday, hold on, what, where am I at? Was that Friday? Okay, I'm, excuse me, on Friday, they're going to be going to the Temple of Karnak. Oh, God, I wish I was going back there. Saturday, let's see, they're going to Edfu. Oh, God. Temple of Horus. Oh, my God. I'm missing out. And they're also going to Sobek and Kom. Uh, Kamambo. That's one of the places I kind of didn't even know about until I went to Egypt the first place. But I'll keep going with this. Forgive me. If I'm trying not to bore you guys telling you about this tour. But um, you get an idea what it's like to go on a two-week tour of all these sites. Okay, so going forward to that Monday, they're taking a motorboat on the Nile to the uh, island of Philae, which was one of the coolest places I've been. Um, you would think you're in the middle of the Mediterranean out there. It's, why, it's just amazing. And then they're going to the Temple of Aset, I, or the, the Isis Temple, or that was recreated, I believe. Um, and they're having lunch, uh, well, it doesn't matter. Let me keep going. On Tuesday the 12th, I'm almost done here. They're going up the Nile River, and they're going, um, they'll be at the same place that from uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark was filmed and some other spots, but they're going to, let's see here. Um, they're going to Tanis. Wonderful. I'm missing Tanis. Evidence of the cataclysm, guys. And lastly, I'm wrapping this up, forgive me, but I want to share all this. On the 13th, Wednesday, at the end of the tour, basically, they're all going to the Valley Temple, and they're going to go into the spas, uh, Paws of the Sphinx. And then uh, following from there, they're going to go to the Great Pyramid. And then day 14, which is an extra day, which is optional, 
people will be able to go into the Osiris shaft because not everyone likes going down there. It's literally the creepiest place you can imagine. The creepiest place I've ever been in my life is the Osiris shaft. Not just because it's 100 feet underground and it's dark, but like I stepped in human bones down there. Like this place is littered with centuries of history that hasn't been cleaned up. And who knows whose bones those were? My God. Um, and there's something about it, like, like the pyramids have a good vibe. The Temple of Hattor has a good vibe. The Cairo Museum had a really weird vibe. It was a bit depleting. Some people don't understand how vibes work. It's a thing. Not everyone has to agree with it. You can think it's woo-woo, fine. But um, I'm convinced. But um, the Osiris Shaft was, I was in there for 30 minutes and I left. I wanted to get out of there. It had a terrible feeling, guys. I felt that way in the Valley of the Kings, too, surprisingly. I wasn't expecting that. Okay, Letar Lindfest. I can't pronounce that, but it's Czech. Thank you so much. It's generous. You said, hello, Jimmy. Whenever I talk to mainstream historians, professors, and so on about a pre-flood civilization or human beings, then we think, hold on. I feel like you cut off, you may have hit send before. Whenever I talk to mainstream historians, professors, and so on about a pre-flood civilization or human beings being older than we think. Um, I don't know where you're going with that, but I'm sure they don't believe it. Here's the bottom line. There was a cataclysm called the Younger Dryas Climate Catastrophe of 12, 13,000 years ago. That's science. If that happened today, it would be civilization ending. It would not be an extinction level event, but yes, it would cause mass extinctions of various animals. And of course, regions around the world for people would be inhospitable from that point on. People were alive at that same period of time. So yes, this event is real. If 75% of all mammals in North America died at that same period of time, humans would have too. It's there. They don't want to believe it. There's no evidence. There is evidence. Gobekli Tepe's evidence. 12,000 years old. Oh, oh, don't get me going. <laughs> it's so fun chatting about this stuff. All right, Nemo Nova. Good morning, or excuse me. Good journey to you, uh, fellow traveler. I'm one of your patrons. Thank you so much. All my generous patrons, got, uh, Patreon followers, guys. I'm not asking, but if you, you know, all that support goes a long way with me. Oh, and I want to mention, so I set up a Venmo. Venmo is like this big thing now, right? Everyone uses Venmo. So if you look in my description, I have my username on there. I just set it up recently, which reminds me, Wells, thank you so much for being my first donor. He knows who he is. What a generous individual. Helps get me some of this camera equipment, by the way. Um, so it's bright underscore insight. It's pretty awesome. If you want to just tip me there because you like what I'm doing, great. If not, I love you anyway. Um, all right, so he says, we look forward to hearing from you when you get back. You bet. Hey, guys, that's the plan. I've, I've said this before for you, you know, those of you that have been following me for a long time, but this is the opportunity to get my momentum back. You know, momentum's a real thing, and now it's like now I just need to get back on my grind and make videos nonstop. It's really hard when I take breaks because then it's like, because what I do, it's not easy. Like, there's a lot of effort I put into to creating these videos. I do it all alone. I'm not great at editing. It's actually my least favorite thing to do in the world, maybe, which is one of the things holding me back. I was looking for an assistant for a long time, but it, nothing panned out. So now it's time for Jimmy to just man up and get this shit on the road, this show on the road, right? Not Jackie Chan. We love you, Jimmy. Thank you for your awesome channel. I think aliens were humans who left the planet long ago before Cataclysm. So, hey. I have a thought, just an idea. What if, what if the moon is the ark? Because I kind of think that may have happened. Now, hold on, I'm not convinced. I can see it now. Oh, Jimmy's insane. He's convinced that you know humans left the planet Earth thousands of years ago. What if you know he's a crackpot pseudoscience? Ah. Guys, anything's possible. You don't know what the hell happened here ten thousand years ago. You don't. You do, you don't. Um, <laughs> and it's fun to talk about nonetheless. So that's one reason to come on these tours because then I open up big time. I'm careful what I say on the internet because like you got to be, you know, I want to be responsible. If I say something like it's a certainty, some people might just believe it because I said it. I would like to think most won't because people think for themselves. People are smarter than people give credit to. But, you know, but if you want to know what I really think, come on a tour. Because, uh, I, you know, put like two beers in Jimmy and he'll open right up. Um, Michael Wiggins, they've discovered a set of ruins older than Gobekli Temp uh, Tepe now. Where at? Please tell me. Um... A. Afizi, incredible content live from Ethiopia. Thank you. Um, and speaking of live, so I don't know what time it is out there in Ethiopia. Must be nine or ten hours ahead right now. So when I'm in Egypt, it's nine hours ahead of Phoenix. So let's say that'll be six hours ahead of New York, I believe. Um, so when I do that live stream, it's hard to say what time I'll, I'll start. But let's say 2 p.m., 3 p.m. in the afternoon at the latest. 
so it'll be a little early for many people out here, but that made me think about that. Um, let's see here. Shut up, mystery man. That's not nice. <laughs> you didn't even spell it wrong. You didn't even spell Ethiopia right. So joke's on you. Love you all, though, by the way. Um, let's see here. Mmm. Thank you, Matthew Rubio. The historian uh, Herodotus talks about a giant labyrinth south of the pyramids. Have you heard about it? Yes, I've been there. On the ground that's above it. It's said to be there. And there was, it's all buried now, but there's tons. Of, and when I say tons, I'm talking countless, millions of pottery shards all throughout. It looks like a huge wave of, of mud went over it, if I'm being honest. And there was, if there was one spot that had the most military and guards around us, it was there, and it wasn't for our safety. They were watching us. It's there. There's, se there's said to be a labyrinth there. That's like known, like it's, a, I mean, this is some, si this is science, by the way. Um, and out of all places that they were like watching us like hawks, yeah. So, and there's said to be some, there's underground tunnels and uh, chambers underneath the Giza Plateau. Let me tell you. Yusuf Ayan's father, Hakim, when he was a kid, he went in an eight mile long tunnel that went from Saqqara to the Great Pyramid. He did it. Um, it's closed off now. There's no evidence. I mean, I can't prove it to you, but like he did it. He adamantly said that, hey, I, that's what I did. And so that's the thing, guys. Why would they cover this up? Why would they prevent people from like discovering this? And I, what I think is if, if you want to know if, if there was some real conspiracy here, I'll, I'll, I'd say that I think it's very simple in that Maybe it has to do with that, you know, Egypt is an Islamic country where the government and the laws that exist in it are Islamic in nature. And if there was ancient evidence that came to light that would essentially debunk or contradict that, you know, religion in itself, there you go. That's my best guess. Or they found some underground stuff and there's tons of loot in there and money and gold and treasure and they're just, just you know, siphoning it. It's all hell and, and re you know, that's another idea too. A. Afizi, I've got another one here. It says, they obviously don't have dictionaries wherever you're from, mystery man. Oh, <laughs> spend $5 just to show him up. Afizi, don't worry about him. And he, don't mind those jokes. You're a wonderful man and um, the joke's on him. And mystery man, I love you too, guys. Don't be silly with each other. But that is funny. Pay $5 just to let someone have it. Well done. Um, all right, someone's asking me, Ernest, so as Jimmy, will you ever visit Mexico pyramids? This, see, this is why I like to repeat things. I said this earlier in the, in the live stream, which is that yes. So I want to put on a tour to go down to um, the, uh, the Yucatan, excuse me, which is, you know, southern Mexico, not far from Cancun, a couple hours from there, and go to Chichen Itza, as well as go more west over to Teotihuacan. I want to go to Mexico for a number of reasons. You don't need any uh, testing to get in there or any vaccine or anything like that. They're not even enforcing masks. I want to go someplace like that. Um, you go wherever you want to go. That's where I want to go. And I've never been. And I've been hearing so many great things about Mexico. When I was growing up, especially being from Phoenix, you hear weird things, especially along the border, you know, because there's cartel and other stuff. <laughs> but I learned there's this lovely woman, Claudia, uh, that I met in Peru that was on the tour with her husband, Richard, and um, wonderful people, by the way. And she's from Mexico. And I think it was her that told me that like, you know, Cancun is so safe because of I don't know if it's true. And I, I don't even remember if it was her that told me. I just, that's what I think. That like the cartel closed, or controls that whole area down there in Cancun, the, the resorts. And it's super safe for a reason. Cause like that's their, that's their money. They ain't gonna allow any crap go, to go down there. So anyways, long story short, yes. I wanna go down there within a year. I wanna, I wanna be there sooner rather than later. Um, all right, guys, who else has a nice question here or super chat or comment? Yep, someone wrote Alex City. That's true, Cancun is controlled. Well, I've heard it from more than one person. It has to be, it's, yeah, I believe it. Good, good. Control and keep me safe. That's all I care about. Um, what do you think about the Shakespeare authorship debate? I, Ozzy Mondi, uh, Mondius, I, uh, I love that name. That's epic. I don't even know if I know. I think I'd have to Google that, guys. I don't know if I'm familiar. All right, we got Andrew with something else again, ancient history of criticism. Kokur Pyramid in Cambodia. Oh, dude. Uh, yeah, that's, I need to go to Cambodia. That's another one. Let's see here. Thank you, Discomfort, for the generous gift. Also, Darren. You guys are so nice. Um, let's see. 
Could the Sahara Desert have been the Garden of Eden? Uh, Eden? Yes. If it wasn't Mesopotamia, then it was there. Because here's what we know. 5,000 or so years ago, the Sahara Desert was a green, lush, tropical paradise consisting of an extensive network of rivers, as well as the largest freshwater lakes ever known to have existed on planet Earth. And it's right next to Egypt. People were there. And, and let me just say, there's mainstream scientific articles that said the same thing that it would have been where people had lived. My video on um, uh, what's buried on, hidden under the Sahara Desert, I think is among my better. I mean, the, the Atlantis Rishart ones are fun. Not everyone believes in that. But if I think if there's one video that I is my go-to to recommend to other people, it's that one. I think it's, I'm proud of myself for it, and there's something there. That, the Sahara Desert is the ancient gold mine for ancient historical facts. And mark my words, they're already, they keep finding new stuff there and they're doing it through satellite. Um, they're doing archeology span from space. They're using lasers and LIDAR from space. And they're finding ruins that aren't supposed to exist out there. And, they're, and they don't even know who they're from, some of them. Um, yeah, guys, like it may, so whether it's the Garden of Eden, of, of Eden, who knows? But there's something there. It's just like, like the Doggerland uh, area, uh, you know, uh, in the northern sea next to, you know, east of England. Like, there's, they know that there's pottery and other things that have been found in the, in the ocean down there, and it's like, what? Who's that from? They don't, what's that about? There's all kinds of mysteries around this world. So let me see, what else we got here? You guys are very nice. How long have I been going for? It says 81 minutes. We got 1,000 people on it, a little over 1,000. You guys are awesome. Um, so nice. Hey, hit the, hit the thumbs up if you haven't. I guess it doesn't even matter. I don't care. I mean, I am, I am grateful for anyone that hits a thumbs up. Um, will you go to Mauritania? Okay, so here's the deal. I want to say yes. My buddy Matt that I went with to Egypt and Peru. If I go with anyone, he's going to be there. Um, my friend Josh Gertson went there. Guys, it is dangerous. Logistics. Okay. Josh almost died when he went there. One, you had to drive through a land, a, a, a legit old land mine field and they saw actual skeletons of people along it the logistics of carrying enough food and water so they were starving out there um, because you're in a legit third world country where you can't just like buy food like you can other places they had a choice at one point when they were so hungry because they were depleting their supply they had to eat either rotten goat goat which they declined or like they were eating leaves dipped in olive oil just to put something in their bellies. So it had, it, if to do it, it'd have to be done right. I'd have to partner with the local government. Um, there's other issues too where they, the, it's illegal to do any type of ground penetrating radar, which is one reason you want to go there to see what's buried under the damn sand. Ugh. I don't think anything would be found in and around the Rishot if it is l the actual location of Atlantis, which is, to me, I, I think it's the most likely location. I know there's doubt. It might not be. I, I, I know it might not be. But it is worthy of further study, and I think it's just far too fun to, to, to not pursue that. But I think the area that would need to be researched would be the area west of the Rishot in the 250-mile range between there and the Atlantic Ocean, the coast. And at that Atlantic coastline, it drops off almost immediately a 1,000 feet dip, deep, and then in the miles that go beneath it, we're talking like 13,000 feet depth, 11,000 feet. It's wild. If you're going to find any ancient blocks, it would be out there, I think. Or in the buried who knows how many feet under the ocean, or excuse me, the, the dirt before the ocean. Um, that would be the place to look. But then by then, if, you know, if those blocks got, let's say, a huge wave brought and like moved all those whatever structures over, that stuff would probably be pounded down to dust by that point. Um, hold on, let me read these um, super chats before they go away. All right, History Kaylee, give me another one. Would you do a tour in Europe to see the ancient mounds, henges, and uh, the domains and uh, dolmens? I could translate the Dutch. Uh, yes, absolutely. History, is, history with Kaylee. Maybe we should set this up. We're going to do a collab. We talked about that. I was thinking maybe uh, when I get back from Egypt, we could do a post-Egypt live stream together or something like that. But yes, absolutely. Um, let's talk about that. Um, discomfort. We know about the nubs, but could you know about the clamps? Oh yeah, there's evidence worldwide. Maybe while you're in Egypt, yes, I'll I'll, I'll I'll document that extensively. Thanks for the for the second super chat, Ollie Halford, or Ollie. 
Thank you for your vids. Great to catch you live. Been a fan from early on. Keen to hear your thoughts on Bob Lazar and Jeremy Corbell. I love them both. Bob Lazar, okay. Before I answer your question, let me read off this, live, uh, this super chat from KDC before it goes away. Good luck and be safe on your travels. Uh, keep it up on covering the truth. Thank you, Katie. The very sweet of you, I appreciate it. Okay, here's the deal. I believe Bob Lazar is telling the truth. However, my own gut instincts, I, 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 he may have exaggerated on some things and or may be some of the knowledge that he has shared, I think he may have heard about from third party. However, I might be wrong on that. I'm not trying to discredit him. I'm just trying to go into this from a, you know, an open mind. Um, let me have a little sip here of my apple juice. He said things that were fraudulently debunked. For example, he said that he worked at S4. They end up, or, or at the, um, where is it besides S4? At the Los Alamos whatever facility. And the government came out and said, no, he didn't. He never was there. And then they come out, someone else who had worked there provided the catalog that shows no, he had an actual contact there. Or his, na his name and phone number was in there. He did work there. And they lied and said he didn't. That right there gives him credence. And because, of course, if he was literally a whistleblower, somebody coming out that was, you know, we're talking Area 51 top secret stuff came out and exposed stuff, of course they're going to discredit him. That's what, that's what any entity would do, or if they're okay with lying. So I think he's telling the truth overall. It doesn't mean that he didn't exaggerate in some things. I'm not saying he did. I'm just trying to go into it with, like, you know, being on my guard. But, <laughs> guys, he knew specific dates that there, were, there was these testing being done with the aircraft, and they got nicked red-handed. He didn't, how would he guess that? So either he knew firsthand or somebody else told him that that's what was going on. Either way, he knew something that turned out to be true, and he did everything he could to try and bury this guy. So I believe him. Alexandra Johnson. Hi, Jimmy. Are there any theories you're hesitant to speak about online but love discussing in person? And would you ever come to Texas? Laugh out loud, not to explore, just for fun. Well, yeah, I want to come to Austin. I've never been. I've been through Dallas and Houston. Houston sucks. I love, I'll, well, I've had fun in Houston. But anyone that lives in Houston, forgive me for saying that. But they all say the same thing. Everyone I've ever met from Houston is like, you know, they're living there for work, whether it's the oil industry, medical field, or whatever. And they're like, you know, this place sucks. But there's some fun places down there in, in Houston. Like, what is it, Washington Avenue? <laughs> Leave a comment if you've been there. Um, yeah, I'd love to come to Austin. I've heard great things. But to answer your question, Alexandra, um, well, okay, I'll just say it. I, I'm, when it comes to the moon, I think there's something there. And by something, I mean that the general public doesn't have you know, access to. Like, to be completely blunt, I don't think the question is whether we've been to the moon. I think the question is what's the, when is the last time we've been there and what did we find? If I had to bet real money on this, I would literally bet that a human being has stepped foot on the moon since the last Apollo mission in 1972. I actually think that. And if that's not true, I think then that various drones or robotics of some kind has since been there to do exploration that we're not aware of. I, I bet on that. Um, also, I mean, yeah, besides thinking that humans are hybrids, I, that, that's what my gut says. I could be wrong, I don't know that. I bet on it. Um, and yes, I do. All right, so let me give you an example if you really want me to get some, some conspiratorial thing. Because here's the question. Or when it comes to conspiracy theory involving ancient history, I do not think for a second that there's a vast conspiracy involving so many academics and whatever. I think most people were taught something and they're going on to repeat it and didn't ask enough questions along the way. However, if there is some sort of cover-up, some people, maybe a small amount of people, are in on it. And I think that's quite interesting that some of the most powerful people on earth have a fascination with the Egyptians. For example, let me, because this is touchy. Um, did you know? All right, so let me, uh, let me be, I gotta be careful in this. I would argue that the pharmaceutical companies, the biggest ones, are the most powerful entities on earth now. They are kings. Whether it's their control over politicians and the media, these people have done it. No one has been more successful with, than them. So much so that they're above the law. This is true. And they, certain pharmaceutical executives and companies, have given, their families I should say, have given enormous amounts of money towards Egyptian antiquities and museums around the world in support of ancient Egyptian antiquities. I don't know if you know that. Let me give you an example, the Purdue family. 
Purdue Pharma, you know, the ones that lied under oath about the opioid epidemic, the, cre uh, the creators of OxyContin. If you haven't seen it, go watch The Pharmacist, four-part documentary series on Netflix. This guy, uh, Phil Schneider or Richard Schneider, or, um, forgive me for getting it. Anyways, it doesn't matter. This wonderful man, a true hero, a true hero, had, was a pharmacist and he had exposed what he was seeing and he's one of the reasons he helped bring this, these people down or at least, I, I don't know, these, none of these people really got brought down. But anyways, that documentary receives my highest uh, recommendation and go watch it and then there's a part in it in the last you know, episode where they share that the, this Purdue family was like really invested in Egyptian antiquities. Now maybe they're just a bunch of nerds like me that are into it. Or maybe, maybe just maybe they've paid to know because let me give you another example. How is it that the underground mummy, the black market for, for Egyptian mummies is a $4 billion a year industry? That's a mainstream uh, uh, news article uh, figure, by the way. Well, the UFC was like $4 billion a year, or is, which is one of the, becoming one of the biggest sports. Uh, the NFL is something like a seven, or maybe it's $7 billion now, excuse me. NFL is $7 billion as well. I believe USC and NFL are competing at this point uh, because with all the lockdowns and everything, like UFC is really blown up. But here's where I'm going with that. If you have the whole NFL being like a $7 billion a year industry, which is, seems like it's going down, by the way. They're losing viewers and money and other things. And you're talking about $4 billion a year, just to put in perspective. That means that some of the rich... Who do you think's paying this money for these mummies uh, and other various relics from ancient Egyptians? We're talking about the richest, most powerful people on earth that have actual, like, real disposable income that are buying this shit up. And they probably have their own little museums in their basement, and God knows what they're doing. They're probably having, like, people over, and they're drinking brandy, and, like, come down here and look at, look at this pharaoh that I... This dead pharaoh I have buried in my basement or, you know, on display. So, yeah. I don't know. I hope that answers some questions and gets you thinking. Michael Wiggins, article sent via Instagram, link is my name. I'll go looking for it. I, I'm not trying to sound cool, guys, but I kind of get blown up on Instagram, especially any time I, I post a story, I'll get, I'll get 50 responses and it buries it, and I don't look at it all the time. It's kind of exhausting. I don't, I mean, go follow me on Instagram, but I don't keep up on it enough. It's just a little difficult for me. I don't know if I just missed somebody's super chat, but let's see here. I got one from Vector Force. $20 and just, just a tip. Thanks, brother. No question, no comment. That's very nice of you. Um, what else do you guys want to know and talk about? I'm on a roll here. Hopefully, well, let me see. It's not showing me my phone battery, but I'm just going to keep going. Yeah. What are you guys saying? Mm. Who's got a, who's got a question here? Anyone else got a super chat? I don't want to ask you guys for many, but Epstein and Bill Gates. Did you guys see Bill Gates recent, uh, defense about his dinners with Epstein. Let me just tell you something. Cause so I, all right guys, so I was a fraud investigator for a, uh, a large co uh, corporation, let's say fortune 30 or so, or at least it was at the time. And I would used to investigate external theft or excuse me, internal theft and fraud. And I would manage a team that did external theft. And so I'd bust like salary managers and stuff that were defrauding the company. Hilarious. One of the most fun gigs I've ever had. And one of the things I was always good at like picking up on lies from, from the get-go, I used to help like friends like expose like <laughs> cheaters. I'm like, dude, I'm like, dude, your girlfriend's cheating on you. Trust me. Look at the way she worded that text. She's lying. <laughs> Funny stuff like that. I wasn't always as good about it directly. If I'm like, you know, in a relationship and like you, you know, you kind of give people the benefit of the doubt. But when you have, when you're separated from somebody, you kind of just sense it. I was good at that. And one of the things I noticed is that when people are truly innocent, they don't apologize. They say, I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't do anything. What do you what? And then Bill Gates is apologizing, saying, well, I shouldn't have done that. Had, because I'm talking like him. I shouldn't have, uh, you know, had uh, dinners with Epstein. It's like, why is one of the richest men on earth asking Epstein for money? He's like, I was just there. There's investment, you know, money for funding. Why are you asking anyone for money for one of the richest people on earth? And why are you having multiple dinners on his jet? And then why are you apologizing for it? If I was him, if I didn't do anything wrong, I would have said, excuse me, excuse me. I didn't do anything wrong here. I understand all these allegations that have come out against him, which is disgusting. But I was, guys, listen, I'm involved in all these investments for the scientific research. And I mean, yeah, I mean, knowing what I know now, yeah, great. I would love to have not been uh, affiliated with him, but you know, leave me alone. I don't care. Like I, I didn't do anything wrong, but he's apologizing. I know I shouldn't have done that. Like what, what okay. What shouldn't you have done then? If, if you knew he wasn't up to no good, you should have a clear conscience. 
He's admitting guilt. He's guilty of something. You can see it in his mannerisms. He's way too physically obvious with how he's reacting. Go watch his interview. This is like from a day ago or two days ago, maybe. Um, yeah, he's, that, he's guilty of something. <laughs> Should I be talking about this? Um, Rick Johnson. Oop, hold on. It went away. Where'd it go? Let's see here. Forgive me. Hold on here. Let me, uh, Ali25, I'll come back to you. I'm sorry. 2569, do you think the dynastic Egyptians were descended from the Atlanteans? I've always thought that as an interesting theory. Yes, they said they were. In the Temple of Edfu, uh, the, uh, or, hold on, did so, I just miss somebody? Sorry, got it just in time. That's what they say. There's two different sources, whether it's Plato saying that they were colonists of Atlantis and, oh no, did someone, did I just miss somebody? Damn it, I'm so sorry, guys. He's, the $5, all right, so apparently the more money you give, <laughs> the longer it stays up. I need to start reading the lower dollar amount ones first. God damn it. I'm missing someone else's. What's in the cup? It's apple juice. Um, all right. God. All right, hold on. I think there's a way I can scroll up and see it again. To answer your question, yes. The Egyptians say that they were colonizers of Atlantis, that the descendants of the, the primeval ones had went over to Egypt and recolonized different parts of the world. This is going to tie into an, uh, one of my best videos I'll ever make. It's a big one. It's a good one. It's going to tie in the Sumerians, the Egyptians, and the Atlanteans, and others. And if you compare some stuff that I hadn't seen before, some historical texts, it seems like that's the answer. That's what I think. That's what I do think. Disgruntled Doomer, you run an interesting channel. Keep it up. Thank you. All right, so I'm trying to scroll up now to see the ones I missed. Rick Johnson, thoughts on the monoliths found on the moons and planets? Okay, so that's something interesting that uh, Buzz Aldrin had said that the uh, what's that name of Mar one of Mars's moons? Um, it doesn't matter. It has this weird looking obelisk that's like 300 feet and standing straight up. He says it's there. He went on TV and said this. Um, he asked people should be asking questions. He said people should be asking questions about it. I think that's weird. So to answer your question, I don't know, but it all ties in one of my suspicions of the moon and other things that there's something there. Um, let me, I'm still scrolling up to see who else is I missed. Uh, forgive me. Um, all right, hold on. I think I'm caught up now that I see here. We got art of Delphi. Great work, Jimmy. What are your thoughts on inner earth, Argatha, Shamb Shambhala? Do you feel like some UFOs may be coming from inside the earth? Okay. So let's be real. First of all, I think it's not entirely possible as wild in science fiction as that may sound to some people. If you look at this UF UFO phenomena that's happening where they're releasing videos of these things that are being observed under the ocean, traveling at hundreds of knots and being tracked by, you know, submarine sonar and other things. If those things are true, then, and regardless of their aliens or not, well, I mean, they, they, what could they be? Could they be us? But where did that technology come from, right? And the, they're being observed under the ocean, then yeah, that might be the axis. You go through caves and on the, because under the ocean, whether it's the Mid-Atlantic Ridge and other places, this, I don't know, most people might not understand just how huge of an area this is and how very possible it would be that if there was a cave system there, if you wanted to hide anything on earth, it would be through under the ocean. So yeah, man, I'm open to it, but I just don't know. I don't know. Hold on one second. I mean, all right, so hold on. Let me just say that's going to have to tie into be, that's going to have to be a video at some point because I have my, I'm going to have to make a video on the UFO phenomenon. I said I would do it a while back and I haven't gotten into it and there's so much to say because I kept waiting. I'm like, there's gotta be more information that's coming light because it kept accelerating. So, you know, I'm gonna just hold that thought and go into a whole video on it. Latar Lenfist, I don't know how to pronounce that, but there's 1290, check. I don't know how much that equates to, but it's very generous, I believe. Regardless of the amount, I don't know what, I almost wanna Google it right now because it's such a big number, thank you. You said, um, thanks for dedication and videos regards. That is extremely nice of you. Emerson Calvalo, or Ka if I said, or Cavlo, Cavlao, either way, thank you, Emerson. You rock. That was very nice of you to say and donate. You guys are so sweet. Who else has a question? <laughs> I'm learning right here. Someone said, I'm a bit skeptical of aliens on earth. Let me just say this. I mean, me too. I don't know either way. What if they never left? Go look at Obama, then President Obama, when he was on Jimmy Kimmel and he was asked about aliens. And he jokingly says, he's clearly joking, but the question is if, he's, if it's true. He said, because Jimmy Kimmel, was, he asked multiple presidents about 
UFOs and Area 51 and all that. And he says that he was jokingly laughing, but he was really awkward about it. And you can watch like these videos on YouTube with people like psychoanalyzing him, these truth detectors. And he basically said something to the effect of that, you know, they're controlling all of us and they won't let us expose their secrets. But he was really awkward about it. He's joking. He's laughing, by the way. So it's like, ha ha, funny. And maybe he's just being a troll, maybe. Or maybe he's literally telling you the truth. And maybe this is why we, there's so much we don't know. And maybe the powers that be know that there are advanced intelligent aliens or whatever, essentially hanging around and what, oh, oh my phone's, hold on, my phone's lighting up. Are people vending money, uh, money? Oh my God, I think that's what that is. I can't say for sure because it already went away. I don't want to touch my screen and mess it up, um, but it just caught my eye and went away. First of all, whoever just gave me money on Venmo, if that's what I saw, thank you. And forgive me for plugging it again, but I figured, because I have a Patreon, and if you want to donate monthly on Patreon or one time, thank you very much. It's very nice of you. I can use this money for future travels. Another, because not everyone's on Patreon, I do have a Venmo now, because Venmo, so many people are on it, I'm like, I should probably do that. So my Venmo is bright underscore insight just like my Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram, go follow me there because I'm trying to grow it. And even though I think, I mean, they're related to Facebook, which is trash. Mark Zuckerberg can go to hell. Um, but I'd love to just delete all social media, but I'm in the game, right? I got to do it. I kinda, you kind of have to. So follow me on there because I'm going to be posting, and I do post like when I travel, Peru and Egypt, you know, things every day. So you'll just see far more on there than you'll see anywhere else. And it's a fun way to stay in touch. And you know you can DM me on there. There's so many people I haven't been able to respond to on DM, and forgive me, but the love is there, and I'm so grateful. So yeah, if you want to tip me on Venmo and let me use that money for various endeavors and future travels and just support or whatever, I'm very grateful. Um, Saul A, what are the oligarchs hiding in existence a pre-cataclysmic worldwide flood? Well, <laughs> that's a very good question, isn't it? And if all these pe powerful people are super interested in the ancients, which they are, many of them, it's, uh, I think they know something we don't. But maybe not. Hey, guys, it's a big conspiracy. Conspiracies exist. People conspire every day to do things on the DL that are illegal or otherwise immoral and out of sight from the general public. That's a fact. Conspiracy theory was created, the word, because oh, it's so negative. It is a fact that the CIA did create that term during when the, a couple years after the JFK assassination, when the theory started really developing, that word was created in direct response to that. Conspiracy theory, that term was created because of that. Because it's condescending. It work, it's very effective, actually. Are you a conspiracy theorist? And people are like, well, no, right? No one wants to be labeled. Okay, uh, Brendan does things. What type of phone will you use to record with you on your trip? Okay, so I have an iPhone 12 Pro. It's very good. Um, however, and I'm going to use that, but this time I will be using a selfie stick, which will be far better. However, my best videos that I'll, and I'll be using that to do Instagram stuff. So follow me on Instagram so you'll be able to see these things. Um, however, for actual quality videos, for future videos, uh, like YouTube videos, excuse me, I'm going to be using this bad boy. So I shared this earlier in the, in the live stream, but there's new people on here. By the way, there's a thousand people on here. You guys are awesome. Um, this is a DJI Osmo 2. This thing is badass. It is a 4K, 60 frames per second wide angle, and it is unbelievably good quality. It can do pictures and video. It's got a joystick. This thing, it, it, it will follow your face. It will also, um, what am I thinking of? Uh, reduce um, shake, what do you call it? There's a terminology for it. Anyways, so you're carrying it around, and it, oh, stabilization, excuse me. This thing is badass. I'll be using this, and it also has a wireless Bluetooth microphone of high quality. Hells yeah. Then, I have my mirrorless HD camera, which I brought uh, to Egypt last time, but this time I'm gonna have a polarizing lens, which will be better, uh, H, uh, as well as this big light, which I was sharing earlier. Hold on here. And it, it, it has multiple shades of color. You can do, you know, see that? This thing is far brighter than you see. This thing is gonna, this lens already picks up on low light sensitivity quite well. This is gonna make a phenomenal difference, particularly when I'm in the Serapium with those 100 ton stone boxes. Um, so let's see here. Um, Vector Force, thank you again. Have you heard of the Emerald Tablets of Thos and the Atlanteans? Absolutely. Um, 
I, okay, I just need to make a video on that. Um, there's some interesting things about the Emerald Tablets, because isn't it still a mystery where they came from? And wasn't it Isaac Newton that had deciphered them? Um, I, I find As Above, So Below to be extremely interesting, which to me almost gives it some credibility. I feel like it could be evidence of ancient knowledge and wisdom that was passed down and they're trying to share it. So I don't necessarily remember the Atlanteans being included. I've read that before, but I feel like when I had read about it, I don't know where I saw that that was included. Forgive me. I'm on the spot right now and I haven't looked into it in a while. Um, let me scroll down because I just missed, I think, another person's super chat. Let me see if I can scroll up. Yeah, Rick Johnson. Can you see the ancient copper wiring in the pyramids? I didn't. But I can show you, I mean, let me just say something that comes to mind about that is the various rust marks around the Giza Plateau that maybe there was some ancient metal there, but it could just be iron deposits. But one thing that comes to mind, which is unrelated, but interesting nonetheless, that I'll share based on your question, which is that one thing I didn't know existed around the Giza Plateau, which I'll also be showing you when I do my live stream. So real quick, to anyone that's new to this, let me just point out before I get back on that, that next Friday, October 1st, I will be doing a live stream across the Giza Plateau. It's gonna be awesome, it's gonna be epic, and I'm gonna show you all the things you didn't know existed. One of which, which comes to mind based on your question, uh, Rick, is that there's like this whole system of pipes, around, stone pipes made out of quartzite, by the way, and quartz, along the Giza Plateau. They were, they were funneling water all over the place. For what? It's supposed to be just, well, the academics say it's just, you know, it's just a, it's a tomb, it's a cemetery, nothing to see here. They were moving water all over the place and they chose quartz of all things for some reason. It's extremely interesting. But as far as copper wiring in the pyramids, let me dig into that. Let me look at, um, is it Rysel? R-S-Y-L-E? Buy a water, a, bo a water bottle for yourself from me. You're sweet. I will. Or I'll buy beer with it. <laughs> um, let's see here. Latara Linfis, again, 249. Check. Thank you. Before Biden, 1290 was less generous now. Looks better. DM Instagram. Visit Bolivia next time you go to Peru. Many interesting places. Free translator and place to stay. You are a gentleman. And let me just say, we were supposed to go to Bolivia when I was in Peru last month, but the borders were closed. To get in, it was gonna take hours. And you had to go through this whole process and everyone would have had to do it. And there was 35 of us on the tour. And then we would have to get retested again. We'd have to do an additional COVID test. It was completely not feasible, but I am very optimistic the next time I go down there, those issues will have been resolved. Or at least I wanna believe. Um, hold on, I'm getting a little bit of a dry mouth here, guys, because I'm talking my head off. Are you guys enjoying this live stream? I hope so. I'm having fun. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you haven't already. We've got more than a thousand people in here. I'm very generous. It shows that I started how many minutes ago? Let me refresh this. Forgive me. 107 minutes ago. All right. Ooh, chat's going. You guys are nice. Is that apple juice? That is what it is. It's apple juice. Keeping up on my vitamins, if you believe me. It is whiskey. <laughs> um, Al or Aafizi, you've got another one here. Did you know when ISIS wasn't committing atrocities, they would diligently go around and destroy ancient Sumerian temples and artifacts? Why? You guys really want to know what I think? So first of all, isn't it interesting that they randomly decided to do that? They were using like new, well, I don't want to say new, let me back up. They were using exceptional heavy lifting equipment, you know, John Deere stuff, like dozers and, and everything else to destroy all those sites. I'm, I'm just going to share what I heard him say with my own eyes and ears that the mainstream media in the U.S. has never reported on. And it is extremely interesting because before I say that, let me tell you why I believe him, because it already confirmed what I already thought, which is that back in like 2012, I want to believe, or 2013, one or the other, when ISIS was storming Iraq, when they were going over the Sinjar Mountains, which is exactly where I was at, I was in Tel Afar, Iraq, and then Mosul. Tel Afar, Iraq has the Sinjar Mountains, which is incredibly special in that the Yazidis, which are the people that were completely decimated when ISIS stormed, that was where ISIS came over and invaded Iraq, Iraq. And the Sinjar Mountains is where they say that the devil had landed, the exact spot. 
How freaking eerie is that? They said when the devil came to earth, he landed on the top of that mountain. Anyway, I remember in my, some of my army friends felt at that time that there was something incredibly interesting about the timing of that invasion. Hey, thank you, Jonathan, for the 50 bucks and the super sticker. What a nice, generous gift. What a, you guys are awesome. We remember thinking there was something really weird about it. I'm like, why are they doing this now? What's the story here? I'm like, I'm like, who's funding these people? Like they had vehicles and guns and they're just these random people. I'm like, in everything I know, I'm like, these people look like the, the examples of sociopaths. Like they were complete conquerors and like there seemed to be no, they just seemed to be more to the story is what my vibe on it was. And then later on, I saw a video clip of Vladimir Putin from Russia. Now let me just say, I don't expect you guys to believe me or him. I'm not saying he's right or wrong. I'm just gonna tell you what he said. Go YouTube it, you can watch it with your own eyes and ears, okay? What he had said was that, I mean, he, the way he said, but let me just say, I, I believed him. He's, he looked like at this reporter, like they're the dumbest people on earth. And he's like, are you guys ever gonna report on what I'm telling you? He's like, they're mercenaries. He said that ISIS were mercenaries, which means that somebody's paying them to go do that. And I'm like, why are they like messing with this uh, gate of Nergal and, and these, these, these statues and, and tearing all this down? Like why, like, are, why are they bothering? I, I just felt, and the way it was reported too, I'm like, you had the media there ready to go and ISIS is destroying these sites, the exact site that I was at, right there where I had stood. I just thought that was weird. Now, I don't know who's paying it. Well, I, I have an idea, and I'm not gonna say that right now. I'll save that. So someone asked me earlier what things I don't wanna talk about. I'm like, I'll leave that, I'll, I'll hold off on saying that on the live stream, but, you know, in person, I would happily say what I think is possible, but I just thought that was interesting. He said that, and he said, it, I, I kind of just believed him. I, I'm like, he seemed to just be sharing it, and the fact that the US never even addressed it, because they could have, you know, tried to debunk him or whatever, I just thought that was interesting. So to answer your question, I feel like maybe there was some people that, had that, that went out of their way to make sure those sites were destroyed. Now why? That's a really good question, isn't it? I don't know why. I don't know who did it. I don't know why. But something happened. And these people seem to be funded. I'll say that too. It just seemed to make sense. From what I know about just logistics and, I mean, even like getting, I mean, this just stole everything, right? But I don't know. I'll get off that topic. It's a little dark. Ancient history criticism is still here. Andrew, you need to come to Egypt. I'll be thinking about you, brother, when I'm in Egypt next week. I'm going to make sure I get sweet, because last time I was there, I sent you the sweet photos of the various nubs around the plateau that were in some weird spots besides just the pyramids, or the, the third period, the Pyramid of Kari. Um, anyways, no idols allowed in their religion. Okay, there you go. That could actually make total sense, right? Yeah, just destroy it. It conflicts with your modern religion and they're like, what the F is this? Goodbye. It could be that simple. No conspiracy. You just want to get rid of it. Just like we've seen throughout history, whether it's the Spaniards invading Peru and destroying all their crap, which I witnessed, which was unbelievable. I didn't realize. It's very comparable to what had happened involving the, um, the colonizers of the United States overthrowing and destroying and conquering the Native Americans. So, ancient history. All right, next year, maybe. We got to make it happen. Um, all right, we got Jordi Lancel. It's past 2 a.m. here already in the Netherlands. I'm heading out. I'll talk to you in Egypt on Friday. Take care of yourself, man. Jordi, I'll remember that. Jordi Lancel. See, this is just so much fun because the same thing happened when I was in Egypt last year. There's a couple people. Dude, I was watching your live stream and I left a super chat. I remember Aaron. Aaron, if you're seeing this, you're wonderful. Um, but it's the same thing. And all of a sudden, next year, or excuse me, week, I'll be at the Marriott Mina house and someone named Jordi is going to come up to me like, hey, that was me. I'm going to be like, that was you and I'm gonna buy him a beer if he wants to drink. Um, fun stuff. Jimmy, take me with you. I'll be your bodyguard, I'm 6'4". Keck is his name. Fuck, hell yeah. I need, I think I could throw down a little bit. I'm very, but you could always use some bodyguards, right? <laughs> I'm not, a, I, I think my best advantage will be seeing danger right before it happens. It's hard to get the jump on me, but hey, you can get the jump on anyone, right? That's a real thing. Um, but that's dark. We'll go on to the next thing. Um, <laughs> Jimmy, wish I could go with you. Unfortunately, we're not. We're all locked down in Australia. Oh, my God. Let's not talk about it. You, oh, my God, my poor friends in Australia. <sighs> I'm seeing what's going on. I'm watching the video. If you guys aren't aware of what's happening in Australia and Melbourne and other things, you need to be paying attention now more than ever. 
I'm thinking about you guys. But let's get off that topic. I don't want to get this into a whole, this is, you know, because guys, I got to, you know, choose a hill to die on. And right now it's, well, it's not premature. Now's the time to speak up. But what I'm saying is that for me, I got to be very careful on the things I'm choosing to talk about. And I can't talk about everything um, until the timing's just right. And then who knows? But let's get on. Jimmy, how's your love life? Uh, who's asking? Ernest. I've been doing the online dating apps, which are hilarious. Um, I've met some nice people, but who knows? Um, there's someone here, do you use roids? Just go to the gym. <laughs> no, I, I've never used roids. I'm not that big. I mean, I'm, I'm vascular, but I've always been vascular, but I do go to the gym. I was there this morning, begin back into it. And um, it's very nice of you to say, that's a compliment, asking if I've been on roids. No, roids would break me down. My God, I, no one should use that stuff. That stuff catches up with you, you know, like injuries later in life and other things. Um, let's see here. Jimmy is a daddy. No, I'm not. I don't have any kids. Yeah, hell yeah, I'm a daddy. I got Sawyer. Come here, Sawyer. Let's see. Let's see. Let's, uh, hold on one second, guys. Hi, Sawyer. What's going on? Look at him. You having a good time? Good boy. Good boy. <laughs> It's me and the dog here. It's a total bachelor pad, guys. It's me and the dog. Good boy, Sawyer. Let's see what else we got here. Does anyone have any? Oh, oh, hold on. Am I missing someone's? Uh... Okay, Rick Johnson. Our government has many secrets that we will never know. Correct. Rick Johnson is correct. <laughs> um, let's see here. What else we got? It's okay, Sawyer. Jeffrey Ball. There's a lot of things happening, Jeffrey. Um, there's a lot of things. Everyone needs to be paying attention. But guys, let's keep the conversation light. That, here's what's fun about the ancient topic. It is a chance to escape from some of the things that are going on in the world that are beyond our control or that bring us immense suffering just thinking about. And um, all right, so someone wrote, what is your travel itinerary, CCRTV? I read it off uh, probably a half hour ago or so. But if you want to see, go to Chemetology, K H E M. I-T-O-L-G-Y, did I say that right? Chemitology, chemitology.com, chemitology, uh, or go to Google, Chemit School of Ancient Mysticism. And then if, on the front page, or if you click under travel or tours, you will see our entire itinerary, day by day. It's all on there. Um, or when I'm done with this live stream, this will be posted and you can go back and watch and I'll list it all off, but we're going to all kinds of sites. Okay, um, who else some stuff? Let's see. So, Timothy, you're a dog person too. I am a dog person. I didn't see what you wrote before that, but um, let's see. Do I believe, all right, uh, Catman, do you believe in the spiritual realm? Yes. I've dabbled in it. It is a real thing. I'm absolutely 100% convinced. It is provable. I've witnessed miracles, and I don't, but no one can possibly believe until they see and believe themselves, and the power is in with all of us, and it involves belief. This is, some people will think I'm totally whack, whack, woo, woo right now. I don't care. You don't have to believe me. Um, it's fine. I'll just share what I, what I, I'll just share. Um, and it's harmless regardless. Even if I'm wrong, it's a path to a better, healthier life anyway. I, I used to, so I was raised Catholic and I smelled the bullshit early on with that. I refused to get confirmed and all that. And, um, hold on. Someone asked what miracle. Well, maybe I'll, well, okay. Let's see here. Um, and I used to think that in what was interpreted as like making everyone believe, you're supposed to believe, you're supposed to believe. And I remember thinking that that was manipulating people to be like, believe and donate in the collection, you know, box or, or bin or, or, or bull or else. That's what I used to think. And now I believe that it's been completely misinterpreted all the way around, which is that if you look at some of the most successful people on earth, they talk about the power of belief. They talk about manifestation and the law of attraction. Now, let me be clear. Sitting around and wishing for things and thinking about it all day ain't going to do shit for you. However, the power of visualization and taking actionable uh, uh, steps in the direction of a goal and putting the physical end behind it, which is hard work. But if you visualize you have, you already have it is before you have it. So you visualize what it's like to have already achieved the goal. That is the secret. It's not about picturing you ha you're going to get it. 
No, all you're ever gonna have is the want. It's not about wanting something. This is, I'm convinced, all right, put, let me put it this way. If you really wanna know my, my thoughts, Neville Goddard, Goddard, whatever you say it, uh, Neville, N-E-V-I-L-L-E, -L -L -E, Goddard, G-O-D-D-A-R-D. -D -D. You can watch his lectures on YouTube. He passed away in the 70s, the late Neville. Confirmed, I didn't come across him until what I believe through my, all my experimentation into this topic, um, Oh, Jonathan, is that a no? Thank you. Oh, that's the same one. Confirmed what I had figured out on my own, which was when I was, all right, so I got divorced. I'm living in Boise, Idaho. I'm living with the dogs at the time. And I'm just experimenting with this stuff. And I'd never been so alone, lonely, and I, I was really dabbling into the law of attraction and experimenting. And there were certain things that worked and certain things that didn't. And it took years to figure some of these things out. And what he ended up saying confirmed what I believe, which is that the, the Bible, for example, has been completely misinterpreted in that it should be reread in first term. The best way to possibly understand it would have been to write it out as if you wrote it. And that many of the things that Jesus or who else or otherwise had said was meant to be read as if you wrote it yourself. Neville Goddard explains these things in a way that to me, I'm like confirmed what I already believe I had figured out. It is exhausting to do these things. It takes a lot of concentration and we are so distracted with so many things in our life. And, um, but you'll never be able to do it if you don't believe. It's all about belief, 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 belief. Believe you've already done it. Guys, my entire channel is an example of the law of attraction. Anyone that's followed me from the beginning saw how shit my videos were. I, ha I have something like 90 videos up right now, but I've made more than 200. Those of you that weren't there from the beginning didn't see the grind that I did. It's like the saying, like everyone sees the shine, nobody sees the grind or whatever. I had to, I failed so much. It took me four months to get 100 subscribers is how bad these videos were. Because now people say, because I've even had some friends like, oh yeah, you're just good at it. I'm like, no, no, you didn't, do you see like the dozens and dozens of videos I made that were complete garbage? Um, and I was so awkward and I'm still trying to get better, but I'm like, some people just assume like, oh, you're just good at this stuff. Like, no, I had to literally adapt and I had to, I believe I manifested this whole shebang. I, I, I set a goal and I'm like, I want to get a million followers. It was a big goal at the time. I'm like, I believed I could do it. I just didn't know how long it would take and how much suffering I was going to require to get there. But if you believe that you can do something, you can do it. And you just got to put the, the power of intention behind it. You got to make up your mind. I'm going to do it. And you got to visualize what it will be like already having been done. And in the process, your mind will flourish with creativity. That's part of the secret too, is that if you really want to access the creative realm, it involves the power of belief as well. Cause then there's ideas that I'll, if I believe I'm going to create a, a fantastic video and I've done this many, many times, guys, I'm not bragging. I'm telling you what I did. I wanted to get millions of views. And then I went on the streak of getting like 11, this is a little bit ago, but I remember going in the streak of 11 videos in a row where I got more than a million views. That's a hard thing to do. And I was doing it all the time by practicing this stuff in my mind, which is I was visualizing in my art. Here's the video topic, but what is it going to look like? And then in the process, I'd be like, you know, a walk in my dog, just being in nature or whatever. And these ideas would come out of nowhere. I'm like, that needs to be in the video. And I was just picturing, I'm like, I'm creating a good video and I get another idea. And I'm like, where the fuck are these ideas coming from? That's the moments that I've been the most creative. And that's why I think these things work. And I think this ties into Nikola Tesla. And I know this is so woo woo for some people. Guys, even if it's not woo woo or the spiritual realm, it doesn't matter. Maybe this is just the way that the mind can become more creative without any woo woo. All I know is that it works. Just believing that you can do something good or, or impressive will lead your brain to open up with more ideas. If nothing else at all, maybe that's just how it works. I don't know. All I know is that it works and the power of belief is the key. Hold on. Let me read some, let me, let, hold on, let me read some of these. All right. Hold on. I'm sorry. Moses. Hey, Jimmy, do you know there is a second older pyramid inside the Cal, uh, Kuhn, uh, Cal Kukan, uh, pyramid at Chichen Itza and the footage is incredible. Highly recommend going to go there and see it for myself, brother. Um, and I will put it on the internet. Are you going to make more videos on Atlantis and its relationship to other civilization? Yes. One of my biggest videos that is yet to come is on that exact topic and it's going to come after Egypt. hundred percent. I'm convinced that it might be one of my best videos yet, but we'll see. Hey, I'll use the power of manifestation and, and law of attraction to do it. 
Um, Rick Johnson, have you heard of people that could mentally project themselves into other planets? It was a government project. I have heard of that. That was a real experimentation they did, like such as Mars and um, what do they call it? Astral projection, right? Or something to that effect. I don't know if it's true or not. But I know for sure that they spent decades investigating that, which is super interesting. You think they would have given up after a few months or a year or whatever. And they've spent years on that stuff, guys. Um, I'd be so curious. I didn't see any comments on all this stuff I was saying for the last couple minutes while I was on my little soapbox. I also wrote, Ernest Soares, preach, Jimmy, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm scrolling up now. I want to see what you guys were saying about this because I've heard other people, whether it's like, and, and some of you will like think these are crazy examples, but whether it's like Conor McGregor, and that's a UFC fighter, so you could say, like, that has nothing to do with what I'm doing. But, I'm like, many, many people, and I can name other names, but some people will, uh, Andrew, Ancient History Criticisms, criticism, I get your method. Many other people, like, it doesn't matter what industry or realm you're in. I'm like, guys, there's something to the power of belief. So even if you don't think it's the physical realm, and, and by the way, that just reminded me of what I was going to say a moment ago about Nikola Tesla, saying his quote about the mind being the, part of the will work of the universe. If you look at Nikola Tesla and Einstein, so I need to make a video on this again, because some of my first videos were on Nikola Tesla, and those things helped me like get my channel going. My first million plus video ever was on Nikola Tesla. If you look at the works of Einstein, he was talking about how all of his ideas came through imagination, and how Nikola Tesla, his all the improvements he made to his inventions came from him brainstorming, like. Guys, it's, it's ideas that come to you. And it's like, where are these ideas coming from? Are, like, are, are our brains like this Wi-Fi receptor of some kind? Because sometimes, guys, some of my best ideas for my so most successful videos I've ever made came out of absolutely nowhere. And all I'm wondering is where the idea came from. Is it a, is it a muse of some kind? It doesn't have to be beings beyond us. Could it be energies? Could it be, could it be anything? I don't know. All I know is that these ideas have worked for me. And I'm convinced, and I've, I've seen them verified by other people that have, have, that have done them themselves. Um, and that includes a lot of people that I find quite inspiring. But I don't want to just like name drop these famous people because some of them have a lot of um, cons to them or, 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 or attributes that you might be like, well, you shouldn't trust them because of this. You've done this in their life. That's not good. But I'm like, you can use these things for good or bad, but you can use them. And I'm convinced that this is the secret knowledge, that it's the, it's the reality that we're all gods, so to speak, that we're all part of the creator. And creator could be nothing more than the entire universe and a thought. I'm not referring to an individual. I'm referring to the all and infinite consciousness, and we're all tied to it. Because if our bodies are made up of dozens and dozens of elements, which they are, like, let me give you an example. We wouldn't live, none of us would be alive if it wasn't for the iron within our blood. You can see there's enough iron in it that m magnets can respond to it. There's been experiments. You can watch it on YouTube. They took a bunch of pig's blood, which is very similar to humans, by the way. And you could put like, <laughs> like a gallon of it or whatever. And you put like, uh, essentially you move magnets and you put like a, a cup of it and you move the magnet around it. And you can slowly steer the, uh, the blood or the, the, the cup of it. I'm not explaining it well at all. You just have to see it done. But the point is, is that without iron in our blood, you wouldn't be alive. So metal, you're made of metal. Well, computers are made of metal too. And if you look at all the other like elements that are, our bodies are made of that we couldn't exist without it, I'm like, well, you kind of are the universe because you're made of it. And you wouldn't exist without these all little elements. I'm going deep, aren't I? Latar Lefist. All right, hold on. How much is 1290 CZK to US? Because you've done this a couple of times already. So I have to, guys, let's take an opportunity to see how generous this person is. And I don't care how much it'd be one dollar. I'm so grateful, guys. I need. I don't. I, maybe I shouldn't put you on the spot, but I'm so freaking curious. All right, so CZK to US. Let's use Google. Twelve ninety. That's fifty nine dollars and forty two cents US. You've already done this like a couple times. That is way too generous. That is extremely nice of you. I love you. I'm gonna give you a big kiss. He said, "Just an idea, law of attraction, belief, whatever we call it. It is not important." Just realize that everything is happening right now. It is just for you. There is nothing else, no one else, just you and now. And this moment has everything and it's just you. Brilliant. That is all that exists, everyone. You are spot on. What a great, beautiful way to put it. The only thing that ever exists or time is, is now. The past happened. We know that. We have a memory. The future will come. Obviously, we know tomorrow, you know, we can, we can, analytically describe it, 
like, oh yeah, I'm gonna wake up in the morning, it'll be 8 a.m. or whatever, you know, blah, blah. But the only moment that ever truly exists is right now. And it's always right now. Right now, right now, right now, right now, right? And when you realize that, then you have power of choice. And you always have a choice. This is where the power of intention comes in, which is that I can choose to, instead of right now me drinking or playing some game or goofing off or doing nothing, I could choose to be actively working on something productive or whatever it is, you know, helping to create a, turn a dream into a reality. I could do that and that is the power. It's about choice and it's extremely easy to be distracted with everything else. Um, this is like almost something they don't want everyone to know and I believe these are the ancient teachings is that we are creators far more so than they want you to believe. You know, it's all in us guys, the power is within us. Oh, Diddy, here we go. Uh, water as well. Our bodies are mostly water, so keep it pure as positive. Amen. Um, and it's so true. Okay, hold on here. Nick Berling Inieri, forgive me if I pronounced that incorrectly. Are you going, are you getting to these places like Egypt without a vaccine? Because if you are, tell me your secret. Respect. <laughs> yeah, respect for you, brother. And I'll, I'll have to say these secrets. Egypt is not requiring the vaccine. No, you just have to have a negative COVID PCR test to get in. That's it. And I have not had the vaccine. Hey, Tevin, because people got so mad at me in the last live stream about what I said because I said I'm never getting it. And that's my choice. If you want to go get it, go get it. But I don't need it. I've already had a COVID and I'm just, that's my own decision. And respect me. Don't leave me alone. People are like, anti vaxxer No, I'm not anti vax Screw you. I was in the military. I got 11 shots in 60 seconds, not including that goddamn peanut butter penicillin shot they threw in my ass. Yeah. Everyone's been in the military, you know what that's about. My God, I'm not anti vax My kids would get measles, mumps, rubella too. Good for me. Good for them. But don't come at me like that, people. Like, you know, don't get me going. Timothy Nathan, chug a beer for me. Thanks, brother. Um, yeah, like this whole thing is they're turning it. Guys, I know so many people that got the vax that got COVID afterwards really bad, okay? Like, and I had COVID without getting the vax, and I was pretty much okay. I think it's my own body type, my exercise, my healthy diet getting a lot of vitamin D. I mean, you can't tell with these white ass arms, but I'm in Arizona, I get vitamin D, all right. I'm just a pasty dude. So like, leave me alone. Like, you know, if you wanna wear, you know, protective measures and not travel or stay home and order delivery, you go do that. But I just don't like how society's turning into this us versus them. This is extremely dangerous. This is what happened in the Soviet Union, China with the Maoists, Nazi Germany. They turn people against each other. Stop it. <laughs> don't get me going. Do whatever you want. Listen to the health officials. Don't get me going this COVID thing. You're gonna get me in trouble. Just, yeah. History with Kaylee. Jimmy, can I have some good vibes from you? Today has been a rough day and I could use some good vibes. And to everyone here, call your loved ones and tell them you love them while you still can. I don't know what to make of that, Kaylee. I don't know. Uh, I am sending you good vibes and I hope your day wasn't too rough. I don't know what you mean by that. Um, everyone give History with Kaylee some love. She's a sweetheart. She has an awesome channel and she seems, I don't know her all that well, but she seems like a very nice person. And everyone, hey, everyone type in, love you, Kaylee, into the, into the chat. Come on now, Kaylee with a K. She's a very nice person, and now we all could use some good vibes. And Because um, guys, we're all in on this together. I mean, whether, whatever's going on in our lives, we all have something in common here, which is the passion for the ancients and our inquisitive nature for finding the truth. And my worst fear, I feel, is coming to light where people are, are you know, turning against each other. I'm like, this is not good at all. Not good at all. Not good, 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 historically speaking. Um, all right, let's see here. We got Ollie2567, big fan of your insight. Humanities, humanities existed for hundreds of thousands of years. The notion that civiliza civilization has uh, started 6,000 years ago is crazy. Older civilizations uh, that we don't have archeological evidence for is likely. 100% agree, 100%. And, and here's how you know. The science shows that humans have existed at least 300 to 350,000 years ago in our current physical form involving our cranial size cavity, same size brain, skeleton structure, at least 300 to 350,000 years ago. Okay, so many cataclysmic events have happened in that period of time. Randall Carlson has pointed out in the last 150 or so, or 144,000 years, there's been at least 16 events that were so cataclysmic, whether it's the Toba super eruption of 72,000 years ago, or the Younger Dryas, and many other things. 
We're so bad that if they happened today, it would be a civilization reset potentially. Not an extinction level, but enough to where it's like society would collapse and it'd be chaos and you'd have to start over and just a lot of things would fall apart and, and, and it would change things up, right? And those things have indeed happened. And humans have been around for that long. And combine that with other science, which is that they're saying that if humans were to disappear off planet Earth today, the last remaining structure on Earth would be the Hoover Dam that within 10,000 years, would, the concrete would curate and fall apart. Now, that's actually not technically true. The Great Pyramid of Giza will still be around. I saw some articles actually. So th these are two conflicting articles, not related, but saying that it'll be around for hundreds of thousands of years. Uh, yeah, and actually, realistically, more like millions because it's layer after layer after layer. You know how much, how much erosion is gonna have to happen just for one layer to go away of, of, of external blocks, and there's many? Those things have been around for millions of years, I think. So, but, but everything else will disappear. Metal, plastic, and, and let me just say, people are like, we would find plastic if the ancients were advanced, but I'm like, not necessarily. You could have, maybe they were smart enough to not use plastic. I've heard Graham Hancock say that. And, you know, there's other ways, you know, like for example, the hemp plant related to marijuana, cannabis, um, is completely biodegradable and can have an unbelievably strong plastic and 100% biodegradable. There are other ways of doing things. Even stainless steel tooling, if you throw it in the dirt, it will rust away. It just takes a little bit longer. And as soon as it's scratched, it's screwed. Um, one little chip in it, done. And then if you look at old cars from World War II or whatever, in some junkyard, they're rusting through, straight through, like nothing lasts, guys. And when we're talking about thousands of years or 10,000 years or tens of thousands of years, nothing's left but stone. All right, we got, hold on here. Is it Kyra or Kira? Kira. $50. How generous. Jimmy, you are so perfect. Oh my God. You sound sweet. Hold on. Let me see your, you look pretty maybe. Hi, Kira. <laughs> That's a very generous gift. I'd be curious to know what it is I said that you like. I appreciate it. The daydream band. You become what you think about, aka daydreaming. From the strangest secret in the world, Erling, Earl Nightingale. Oh, wow. I, yes. Thank you. Outstanding. Thank you for your awesome content. Thank you very much. You are. So what we focus, uh, focus our, our thoughts on, we do become. Even um, one of the Caesars said this. I don't know if it was Julius or, um, forgive me, but this is true, actually. So that's one reason how my, that helped my channel too take off when I was talking about you know, the power of you know, manifestation, visualization. I was spending, all right, so here's what happened. I got divorced. I'm living alone with the dogs. I had like no, hardly any friends in Boise, no family. And I just spent all my time thinking about the ancients. Now it's more difficult now because I'm so distracted with other things in my life. But when I spent all of my time thinking about these topics, it was so easy. And then I became the YouTuber I wanted to be. I want to be, you know, this big YouTuber making all these, talking about interesting theories, not just the ancients. I talked about JFK and Nikola Tesla, spiritual stuff um, and other things. And Dao Di Ching, you'll remember that. Um, so, yeah, that's the, that is the secret. You are what you think about. Amen. Um, Zero FX Gaming. Tell Kay we all wish her good vibes. Don't let the bastards drag you down. Um, and whether it's that or family stuff or maybe sick loved ones or whatever it could be, you know, hell yeah, that's all nice of you guys to do that. Um, hey, will you guys hang on just a half a second? Oh, wait, hold on. I got water right here. I was going to pour myself another cocktail or orange juice or apple juice. What did I say? <laughs> hold on. Wow, there's 1,100 people in here. I feel so blessed. Um, well, I'll tell you what. You guys hang on. So I have a liquor cart. It's awesome. It's over there. I actually normally keep it right here, but I don't want it to be in the, in the shot. It's a pretty sweet thing. I got an Amazon. It looks awesome. I got a bunch of bottles on it. I'm going to pour myself a tiny little cocktail. You guys hang with me. I'm going to put a little ice cube in here. I'm not going to be far away. So if it looks like I'm gone, I'm really not. I don't know if you guys will be able to hear me, but just hang tight. I'll be back in like 30 seconds. This is going to be quick because it's all right here. Hang on. Let's see. Come here. You guys get on Amazon, you can get these big blocks. Big square block. Yeah, I'll be right back. Hang on. Okay. I'm going to tell you guys what I'm having, but you're going to laugh at me, but hang on a second.
Hi, Sawyer. I don't know if you guys could hear that, but here we go. You guys ready to laugh at me? So here's the situation. So this is not as strong or big as it thinks. Well, first of all, that huge ice cube. So this is literally about one and a half shots or so, uh, ounces, let's say. Um, so this is Fireball. It, don't laugh at me. I actually like it, I, but I don't do shots of it. If you pour it in with ice, and I, I, what I did is I put a bunch of water. So you saw, I poured it, I showed you, and then I went over to my little uh, water thing and I diluted it with water to make it a little bit less sweet. But there's something fun about it because it's not strong. It's like 60 something proof. So it's not like full blown whiskey. And I guess with its high concentration of sugar, it's kind of a fun buzz, you know, the sugar with the alcohol. So <laughs> you can laugh at me all you want. Cause like people laugh like, cause I have fireball in the car. Like you drink this shit? And I'm like, no, yeah, <laughs> not shots of it. Um, what are people saying? Hold on. Yeah, water, right. It, it, I swear to God, you saw it. I poured it, I went over there. Like, come on now. Um, but let's see here. Let me get back to these super chats. What are your thoughts about the Sumerians and the Anunnaki and human origins? Love your content and insight. Okay. Without talking about Zachariah Sitchin, because he may have not been right, or maybe he was exaggerating or whatever, it doesn't mean that he's wrong, but I'm not quoting him here. I'm very interested. I do look at those tablets and I do think that they understood the solar system. It's there, it's the sun and, and planets around it. That's what I think. Other people, experts, academics, whoever, they disagree. They say, no, it's not. Fine, they can think what they want. I think that there is, and I think they had advanced knowledge. There's also a tablet that shows them like looking up at this, like a person on like this thing with wings. I think they're literally trying to show you that someone came here, guys. That's what, I, that's what I think. I think it's extremely likely, but maybe not. It could, it not. If nothing else, it's a fun topic. But Dustin, Harry, what do I think? I think there's something to it. Um, so let's see here. Rick Johnson, interested on your thoughts on the Ark. It seems they found remnants. Dude, I don't even know what to think because I don't know what the Ark is. Was it knowledge? Was it the Ten Commandments? Was it the, was it, was it, okay, put it this way. If there was an ancient technology, is that it? Because if you look at, um, a lot of the glyphs in Egypt, um, they all have this thing. They call it the, um, was it the Jed? The, uh, supposed to be Osiris's backbone. <laughs> it doesn't look anything like a backbone. To me, it seems to me, because they show them like handing it off to people. I'm thinking they're sh they're sh that's the technology. And it looks like something was made to operate with frequency. And they've never found anything like it. So I'm like, what the hell is this thing? So um, the Ark might be exactly what that is. I just don't know. And maybe it was stored in the Great Pyramid. I don't know. I'm really open-minded. But man, that gets me thinking. This is something I'm gonna have to cover when I go back to Egypt here. All right, Thomas O'Brien, Jimmy, you are so knowledgeable and passionate about so many topics. I've followed your channel for a while. Where do you do your research? I want to know what you know. <laughs> Can you refer sites, videos, books, people? Please never stop doing what you're doing. That is a very sweet comment, Thomas. That means a lot to me. Okay, so I'll tell you exactly what I do. And it's not hard. Anyone can do what I do. I do a couple things. There's any topic in itself. Let's just say it's the Great Pyramid. I read what all the academics say about it. This is what's taught. Here's what they all say and here's all their explanations. Cool. Then I'll look at a number of alternative researchers on what they have to say. Whoever I think's the most credible, those people. You know, people that, you know, level-headed people, whether it's Graham Hancock and whether it's Randall Carlson or there's so many others. I mean, where do I begin? I don't want to just start naming names and forget somebody. Um, and then I will look at maybe more of the crazy theories or some of the other, like there's so many, when I say alternative theories, it's all over the place. Cause you get somebody that's saying the pyramid was a tomb. You could have someone over here saying the pyramid was a power plant. You get someone over here saying that the pyramid was a, 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 a you know, a device for, you know, tell, you know, communication to other planets. There's so many different things. And I'll look at all the above, and then I just think for myself and develop my own theories. And there's nothing more powerful than thinking for yourself. You can't be right about everything, but um, that's essentially what I do. So as far as recommending books, I, well, there's been a many, many different things that I've read, but I think that the, where I would, because I feel like I gotta give credit where it's due and people that inspired me most. So I would recommend everyone buys Graham Hancock's books. Um, Magician of the Gods, Fingerprints of the Gods, support him. American Before, I haven't actually read that yet, but I bought it. Um, 
and support him. Like this guy has endured so much backlash and uh, he's a smart man and he's sharing things because he, he, he says it himself. He's a journalist, he's a, a synthesizer. People are like, I don't agree with him. It's like most of the stuff he's citing is things that other research has already done. And they come after him I'm like, he's putting things together and sharing it. And, and he's right. He knows that there's more, there's a mystery to our ancient past and that's a fact. So, um, but yeah, I'll never stop doing what I'm doing. This is just the beginning. I've said it before, but now it's time, like I said earlier in this conversation, this is the time where I need to get my momentum going. I need to come back from Egypt and get underway back on my grind like I haven't in a couple of years now and just become obsessed. It's not easy to do though, especially when you have distractions in your life. Um, but they're all good distractions. But um, yeah, that's what I need to do. Because when I'm, when I'm super focused on something and obsessed, that's when I do my best stuff. It's not easy though. But that's what I need to do. And, and comments like this inspire me, guys. So just all send me your best love and, and your support. And you guys all are supportive. But, you know, sometimes we all need a kick in the butt, right? And that's one thing, you know, come back from Peru and then going back to Egypt, I feel like reinvigorated to uh, get underway with this stuff. Um, how long have I been going now? Is it an hour and 45 minutes? That's pretty cool. Um, or is it 145 minutes? It's hard to say. Um, Okay, so who else has a question or comment? Andrew, yes, you get burnt out. Yeah, like, all right, so to be honest, yeah, I did get burnt out. I did, and, and that's okay, but now I'm feeling like, now it's, it's like a cycle. Now I feel like I want to get burnt out again, and I feel like it could take a while before that happens again, because I'm so rested, so to speak. Write a book. Yeah, man, that's on my list, for sure. Jimmy Potus, 2024, no, they would kill me. They would absolutely execute me if I was POTUS. They would. <laughs> it would happen quick too. I just wouldn't. Sh I would just talk too much. I'd be doing. Uh, I'd be doing the whole uh, White House or the Oval Office speech. It'd be similar to Eisenhower's. Go look at Eisenhower's last speech before he left the White House. He left the White House before JFK became president. Look what he said about secret societies and the infrastructure of the military industrial complex intelligence agencies. He told you everything you need to hear. JFK came in and then within 11 months before his murder, uh, look at what he said. Exposing secret societies. Secret societies could be anything. It could be the CIA or whatever else. Like it's, you know, a, a you know, conglomerate of whatever powerful entities that operate with whatever abilities and, and infrastructure and, and influencing society with whatever means, whatever it is that they have. That's a real thing. It's true. Now, it doesn't have to be a big bearing conspiracy. I think it is, but I mean, it doesn't have to be. Let's see here. Colton Broccoli, that's a fun name. Uh, taking a road trip soon and would love to buy you a meal or coffee. Hell yeah. Um, buy me steak and beer. I'm just kidding. Uh, that, would, that would be lovely. Hit me up on Instagram. Um, that's another thing, and I don't want to plug it again because I sound like a douche because I seriously don't like it, social media, but I got to do it. If you're not following me on Instagram, go follow me. It's bright underscore insight. I share them far more than I do on anywhere else, you know, YouTube or otherwise. And, you know, it's a way of keeping up and getting to know me more, and I'll, I'll be sharing things daily, uh, vlogs and pictures from Egypt. I was doing the same thing in Peru and when I went to Egypt last year, so... Um, but that's an easiest way to get in contact with me. It's just that like every time I make a post, people, I get dozens, sometimes I'll get a hundred DMs and I can't, it's, it's honestly overwhelming, especially someone like me that doesn't like to be on my phone that much. It's kind of, it sucks because there's a lot of people I haven't responded to or I never even saw it by the way. I've had people send me multiple, you know, messages and I end up finally seeing one. And I'm thinking like, they sent me a message a year ago and I had no idea. So forgive me if, you know, someone that, if you've messaged me, and I never saw it, you know, it's, I guess it's a good problem to have, but I still feel bad because if someone sends me that love, I will. I want to see it. All right, so Jake Bre uh, Berend. Oh, I don't know if I said that right, but Jake. Jimmy, I think the work you do on your channel is more important than you possibly even realize. Thank you for everything you do. Man, that's, it's surreal to get a comment like that. All right. See, it's stuff like this. It's very motivating, guys. It makes me want to get off this live chat and freaking hammer out my next video. Man. Um, pools jet. While in the U.S. Air Force, I lived in Turkey and Greece for three years each. Crazy history for both. Islamic nations are a major deal trying to have a peak sea. March on, sir. Thank you, sir, and thank you for your service. You know, it's so funny. I never, anytime someone thanks me for my service, here's the best response. I got this from an old friend. It was in the military, too. 
So don't say, oh, thank you for your service. Say, thank you for your tax dollars. <laughs> College intuition, and I, I, when I was in Iraq, we had that KBR food, and it was steak and lobster tail every Sunday. <laughs> um, let's see here. Huff432, what is this? Atlantis Together. Oh, Atlantis, haven't you hit me up before? I feel like we've never been in, t uh, never chatted though. I recognize it because your picture is the, the um, it's of the Rishot, the Rishot structure. What do you guys think about that, huh? Okay, so what else we got here? I'm looking, trying to see through these comments. I'm filter, I'm scrolling up right now here. Hopefully I don't miss anything great. Um, Someone said BD or BMD, Jimmy, what do you think of the whole CE5 thing, remote viewing? Okay, here's the deal. I think, all right, I think most people with that are full of shit. However, I don't know what you mean by CE5. If, if you're referring to the classified, when they were doing this decades ago and doing experiments on it, they did see that there was some stuff there. So maybe it is, I'm not saying it's not possible. I'm not saying it hasn't been done and can't be done in the future. I think some people are full of it, but to be honest with you, I don't know. Put it this way, I haven't done it but I have had other intuitive moments in my life. I've had, in more than one occasion, I've seen things before they happen. Kind of like, I'm not saying like total Jedi. I'm not saying like, I, like, I'm not talking psychic stuff. I'm just saying I've had weird intuitive moments that turn out to be correct just a little bit before. And I'm, I'm not, how do I explain it? Let me give you an example. Um, I'm trying to think of something good because if I don't give a good example and it sounds like not good enough at all um, and I'm on the spot right now. Hmm, I don't know. For me, what I'm most talented at is kind of sensing what someone's gonna do. Like, protect, like as far as self-protection, um, you know? Not getting crossed by people. Sometimes I've been good at that, intuitively sensing their underlying motives. Um, Rick Johnson, the Russians beat us to Venus with amazing visuals. Yeah, man, they sent that probe there. It only lasted a few minutes, right? And they got those pictures. Why haven't, that's another thing. Why, like, Venus is unbelievably interesting. It's the closest planet to us and nobody's talking about it. Everything's Mars, Mars, Mars. What about Venus? What about that, you know? Um, let's see here. Someone wrote, all right, let's see, Iron, Wild, uh, Iron Wind 1972. I know what you mean. I sat at an intersection to eat my lunch and I knew there was going to be a wreck there. A few minutes later, a wreck happened right in front of me. Yeah, man, like weird stuff like that. I've ex so I have a uh, my dog Sawyer's dog aggressive. It's unfortunate. He used to be really cool, but then he got bit, and he has PTSD, and it's been tough. And I've experimented. So I try to avoid passing other dogs because he lunges a bit, and if he's too close, it's so obnoxious because he's a hundred pound boy. He's got that four wheel drive. He's very very strong. And so like I've kind of experimented with this on dog walks to try to avoid other people, and I've had some weird results sometimes. But I mean, it's like you can't talk to people about this. You sound crazy or like oh you're just, you know it's coincidence or you're dumb. You don't know what you're talking about. I think this comes into the power of belief. I believe I can be intuitive. I believe, you know, that I can be connected to the source of all that is. And with that can come things that people would otherwise think aren't possible. That's how I would put it. Do you know of Dr. Stephen Greer? Absolutely. I think he's done a great service by bringing things to light. Because what was that documentary? Was it um, Disclosure? I believe. Where basically, if, there, if he didn't, if he, I'm not saying he proved, prove that aliens exist or have visited Earth. If he's done nothing else, it's proving that there is a cover-up, that there has been, at some level, a stripping away of information that's been available to the public. He has proven that. So there's something there, there. Now, if it's not aliens, if it's just advanced technological, um, you know, uh, classified stuff, I mean, whatever. Hey, hold on, I'm distracted. Hey, over here is my living room window. And I, I live in this unique set to where like directly across the street from me are my neighbors. And now that it's the sun starting to go down and I got my lights on in here, I had this feeling of being watched. I can't see, but maybe this is an intuitive moment. All I wanna do is shut my blinds real quick because right now I'm in my kitchen doing this live stream and I can just see this couple watching me probably. You know, they're like, what the fuck is this guy doing? <laughs> like, who's he talking to? Um, so this will only take 10 seconds, hold on. So that, that reminds me, guys, listen to this. 
So speaking of intuitive moments, let me give you another example. And this is so freaking wild to me that it like verifies it. So when I was living in Boise, Idaho, when I was making all these videos, I, was, I had a desk in the front living room that, that overlooked the street. And so I would see everything going on in the neighborhood throughout the day, people walking by with their dogs and whatever. And you know how you, there's a saying that, um, you know, people can sense that someone's watching them? It's true. Because I, I experience, you guys think I'm so weird, I don't care. It, you gotta do the experiment. Jimmy's gotta know what's going on. I used to try it. I used to just watch the person. Now let me just say, the way my yard was laid out, it wasn't obvious. The window was way back, so we're talking like, I don't even know, 50 feet from the street, not close, like some houses. Um, and there's a tree in the way and just the lighting and stuff you couldn't see in. So even I'd have to have all the lights on, which I normally wouldn't actually, especially during the day because they got good lighting in. But like you couldn't see from this, is the reflection, because I'd, you know, I'd go outside and see them like, so I knew that when I was inside, people wouldn't see me. You know what I'm talking about? Just the reflection of the glass itself and just the fact that it faced the, uh, the north and like no one, the sun isn't shining in, etc. So I used to like sometimes just like stare at the person and I can't believe how many times all of a sudden you see someone, you know, they just be walking all of a sudden, they go, you know, like, like instinctively look, it's a real thing. And let me tell you another thing, and this is a random, but it's along the same lines. There was that uh, documentary on Netflix I saw a while back about, uh, I don't remember the name of it, but it maybe was the Unabomber about uh, Ted Kaczynski, the Unabomber. And there was something that happened that confirms this, in my opinion, which is that he was, when he was living in that cabin out there in the middle of nowhere in Montana, he had his near neighbors, whoever it was, and there's this woman and her daughter out walking or doing whatever they were doing one day, and he was out there with his gun, and he was essentially laying down in the forest, and he basically just, he was pissed at these people for some reason. I think it's because they were cutting trees down, and he was really against it. And regardless, he pointed it, and they had no idea. But he basically, and the reason why they know this is because they, when he found his diaries and everything, and he decoded it, he wrote in detail about it on the day. He's like, I, you know, I pointed, I had my sight, my rifle sight right on there. And what, these poor people, this daughter and this mom didn't know till many years later, they had this moment when they were out there, that same exact moment, they got this terrible feeling they were being watched and went and left and went the other direction, which was confirmed in his writings. What the, what are the odds of that? You have this feeling you're being watched and you're right in that. And I'm convinced that the conviction and the energy he's putting behind it and that he's pointing a gun at some people, some in a, a woman and a daughter, what's going on? What are you doing? Um, and so the energy he had behind it was extremely powerful, especially being someone of such high IQ like him. He was a, he was a genius, let's be real. Um, and he used it for doing some terrible things. Um, but yeah, like that was, guys, that happened. Go, go look into that. That's a real thing. And, and to me, I already saw in my own eyes. I'm like, I feel like if you stare at somebody, sometimes they just know. And, and it's just like what happened with these blinds. I'm like, am I being watched? I don't know. It's fun stuff. I haven't looked at any of these super chats in a bit, Kira. We got that. We got that. Does anyone else have any questions or comments? I mean, I'm having a fun time, but I can't tell how much battery life I have on my phone because the way that the layout is, it doesn't, it's just not showing up. So I have no idea. Let me, hold on, give me a half a second here. Let me see if that works. Nope, that didn't work at all. Dang. Okay, so I have no idea. So if this randomly dies, and I don't think it will because I had a full charge when I started and it's an iPhone 12 and it could probably, it'd probably go a number of hours, I imagine. I'm not sure. But I'm having fun. I'm in no rush. Um, oh my God, this is a head comment. Did you get any Egyptian poon? No, I did not. <laughs> you guys, some of these comments are so funny. Uh, Egyptians are incredibly reserved, by the way, um, and, and religious and conservative. Um, it's not like American culture, going, you know, but um, um, let's see here. Who else has a question? I'm, I'm trying to scroll through and see. There's so many here, I and mean, they just keep going, so I don't want to miss something great. Um, and I also have a super chat question of some kind, but all right, let's see. I'm just looking for any question. I want you guys to feel you have to pay money to ask me a question. I'll, ask, I'll answer anything. Bosnian, Bosnian pyramids, I see that from Freaky. Nah, I don't think so, man. I looked into this. So hold on, hold on. I'm not saying it's not something ancient and that there's not something there. All I'm saying is that I don't necessarily think it's a pyramid. And let me just say, I have not been there, but other people that have been there and evaluated the site, like, like say, for example, Grant Hancock, 
didn't believe that that's what it was. And I, I value that opinion. But I don't know. But if, if it is indeed true, like with that example of that leaf that was found under that um, uh, stone, that, that, that cut stone, if that is indeed 30,000 years old, if that's all true, then there's, some, then there's something that needs to be discussed. So calling it Bosnian pyramids, I mean, it's, I mean, it looks like it. The mountain itself looks like a pyramid, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's what it is. I don't know, though. I just don't know. Let me, I'm talking so much, I'm freaking dehydrating here. Plus, my whiskey will take it out of me. Someone asked me, Jimmy, have you read about the monoliths in Russia and Canada? What do you think of them? Okay. I remember looking into that a couple years ago, so it's been a while. And my impression was that, if I remember right, I remember, the, put this way, I didn't go down that path again, so I want to say I wasn't convinced and was waiting to say, well, let's wait for more information to come to light. The internet, it's 20, you know, whatever year I was looking at this, you know, like it's, you can't keep things under wraps very long in these days. So I don't remember thinking that it was something to it, but who knows? I'll, 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 I'll bite my tongue on that because I don't know for sure. All right. I don't want to, dude, you keep giving me, Latar Linfist. I don't even know how to say this. The gentleman who's been very uh, generous to me from the check, uh, from, uh, you know, let's see here. Tried to send super chat and after try sent, it showed me edit and try again. Well, I'm seeing this one. Um, what do you want to ask me, man? Um, all right, so Atlantis together. What, what is HUF? Hold on here. What currency is that? This is so much fun. Let's just do it right on the fly. HUF. Current. Oh, Hungarian, of course. Duh. Um, have you seen the 3D models we created about the fortresses and the Rishot structure? AtlantisTogether.com. Could you check uh, the project you inspired? I, will, I have not seen. I will look into it. However, if you're referring to... There were... That I had covered in my first videos on that topic. There were things that looked like fortresses. But no, I have not... I don't know what they are. And, and the last I heard is that maybe, excuse me, um, is that they were uh, fencing for cattle or whatever else. I don't know if that's true. I don't know what they were. All I know is that I'm not aware of the structures actually being there now, but this is something I have to look into. And especially before I make that next video on the Rishot structure, because there will be another, you'd be damn right sure of that. So I got to look into, dude, I haven't, I haven't explored all your stuff. I have been all over the place with so many things and there's just so many Various topics I need to catch up on, but um, let me go to whatever you're doing. Keep doing it. Like if I can bring a bunch of attention, because I wasn't that big before those Atlantis videos. I had three, four hundred thousand subscribers before my first one, and those ones really kind of put me exponentially. It doubled my channel, to be honest. So it's like if you have something, put it out there, and one video can change your entire everything. Um, but Dustin Harry, Jimmy, have you come across anything about Argartha underground city somewhere in the Asian mountains? Curiosity is my sin and welcome to AZ. Thanks, man. Um, yeah, I've heard weird things, but like, this is like, not me when I say heard weird things, I didn't hear from somebody. I meant like just, you, you know, you see things on the internet bouncing around and you keep seeing stuff like that. So I don't know. I don't know what to think. I mean, I've heard of like tunnels in Afghanistan. I've heard some weird stuff about that. Let me type in. Argatha, just to double check if it's the same region I'm thinking of. Because I've course heard of this a bunch of times. Okay. It's the legendary kingdom that is said to be located in the Earth's core, of course, but where's the entrance to it? Um, I would say under the ocean if that existed. Because it, it brings me back to as above, so below, you know? Maybe there's something going on inside the Earth. I mean, like, it's so big and it doesn't have to be a civilization, but like, I wouldn't be surprised if there's some sort of Species of whatever it could be living under there, whether it's insects or whatever else. Someone, he, Keck, he's drinking Fireball. Yes, I'm drinking Fireball with water and ice. I like it. <laughs> I should have lied and be like, oh, this is fine scotch. Yeah, this is, a, this, is a, this is Lagavulin 16, you know. <laughs> okay, guys, what do you guys want to ask me? I uh, Pretty soon I'll have to walk Sawyer. Well, he's being good. He's actually laying down. Hold on, let me just show you what he's doing. So I'm in no rush. While he's doing that, hi Sawyer. Oh, I don't want to wake him. Once he starts pestering me, then it'll be time for sure. Um, all right, let's see. Antarctica. Oh, mm, that's 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 the next frontier, isn't it? All right, someone asked me something. Come on now, keep me going here. 
mean, these, hold on. I don't want to miss anything. Have you had any unexplained phenomena happen to you while you were deployed? Not at all. Not while deployed. Not at all. Um, no. The one thing that comes to mind about phenomena, and no one, I've told this story before to some people I know, and so they always just brush it off. But the one thing I had with some phenomena involved a dream that I had. I was living in Boise. I was in an apartment. This is when I first got there. I was in an apartment complex this before I went into a house. And I was sleeping facing the other direction away from the window. And I had a dream that there was someone peeing outside my window of the bedroom. And I woke up facing the other direction, so not facing the window. And I basically just like, the dream was so powerful. I'm like, is there someone outside my window right now? What the hell's going on? You know, you have a dream, you're like not sure if it's real or not. And I go and look outside my window and there's a dude walking up. Like there's three people, but one was close to the window. The other people just, they're just walking through. This is not even a path, though. it's not near the sidewalk. So they were walking through an area where people shouldn't be, but like it was grass and some trees and it was like along the fencing of the perimeter of the apartment. And he came up next to the window and then started pissing. That was one thing that like came to mind when I was thinking about like, you know, intuitive moments before they happen. Cause I'm like, what are the odds of that? And then I've, I've told this story and like, well, maybe you heard them talking and you knew he's going to pee. So it was kind of your dream. You thought your dream. I'm like the freaking AC unit was on, which is right next to where he pissed. It's loud as hell. You know, it's like, you know, AC unit compressor. I didn't hear anything. I couldn't, I didn't hear him even when he was doing it. That's now the whole, let me just say, that's the only time I've ever had some sort of crazy dream like that, but I don't know what the hell. You know, I, I, I guarantee I watch the comments right now. I'm like, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. Um, but anyways, it's fun to share because like it makes me wonder. I'm like, it hasn't happened since. I don't, I'm not, I don't know. I don't even know what to think about it. I just want, I want to wait for it to happen again. Do you think there was a civilization in the, in Antarctica? Well, I'm very open to it. I'm waiting to see. I think it's incredibly possible, especially when we talk about pole shifts and other things and the Adam and Eve story. It is so possible, and I find it very interesting. There's so much stuff going on down there with all these countries from around the world. It's very possible that there's just a lot of precious resources there that they are expecting to find under the ice, whether it's oil or precious metals and minerals. And maybe that's all why the reason why the, you know, the powers that be around the world, or countries, I should say, want to be there and are there. But whether there are civilizations... I'm, I want to believe it, but it's like, you know, how long ago has some of that ice been there? I think some of that ice is more recent than some. All right, because here's the thing. What about the Perry Reese map? Doesn't the Perry Reese map show some parts of Antarctica that are now under ice but weren't then, but they know it's there just because of our technological abilities today to understand that that's what the land looks like underneath the ice? If that's all the case, then, well, what the hell? Like, people live all over the place. They just, this is what humans do. They travel around and they live. All right, hold on. Let me read some of these super chats. Magus Galzu, have you looked into the Mali Empire taking all the gold from Atlantis? No, but I know that Atlantis says to have gold and Mali and those other parts of Africa have gold. So let me dig into that a little bit. And um, I mean, the Mauritania has gold. It's one of its uh, uh, highest exports or among them, I should say. Um, yeah, there's something to be said for that, I think. Sky Watchers, Sun, and well, it cuts off after that, but thank you so much for the super sticker. And we got Harry White here. Why didn't you take ayahuasca with Ben in Peru? And you should look into CE5. All right, so let me make a note about CE5. Um, and to be honest with you, so here's the thing about the ayahuasca situation. Um, that is so high on my list to do. But I was on a tour, and I would have had to stay in country longer. And I got to be honest with you. That is like doing an ayahuasca journey, like a four-night thing is so high on my list and it has been for years, but it just, this particular time down in Peru, which is such a shame because while you're there, it's like one in Rome, you gotta do these things. But I think the best thing would be for me to, to do that in a trip like that solely for that reason. Not like, oh, hey, I'm traveling. Cause you gotta keep in mind, when it comes to luggage and other things, I'm bringing all this camera stuff. I'm, I'm traveling and bringing attire for traveling and, and for going to sites and all this stuff. And, I think an ayahuasca journey needs to be like me and one other person. And it's like literally a soul. I got to go there expecting to have a lot of downtime to just spend all day thinking about my experience from the night before anticipating doing the next night's ayahuasca ceremony. Cause that's what I'd want to do. I want to do four nights in a row minimum. That's what I would like to do. 
because that's what a lot of people have recommended to have a profound experience. So it's kind of a shame going down there and not doing it, but I, I believe I just need to do it. Um, oh, Limfest, you're going, if I sell this right, Latar, it don't let me send questions feed censored, what? But it's letting you send this, another 249 check, but it's good night, it is a good night, and I'm, you've been extremely generous. Hit me up on Instagram or send me an email. You are wonderful. Rob Weisenhunt, drink what you want. It's okay to like things. I'd love to buy you a few and chat someday. Have fun and be safe in Egypt. Thank you, brother. All right, so anyone that's on this uh, live stream that wasn't here in the beginning, let me just say a couple things that I said earlier on that you may have not heard. One of which is that I fly out, I fly out to Egypt next Wednesday and on Friday, October 1st, a week from today, I will be doing a live stream from the Giza Plateau. I have the appropriate equipment. I believe that it'll be able to be done. The connection involving 3G that they had out there, it might be 4G now or 5G, because uh, I imagine they'd skip over 4G at this point. When I was there last year, it was all 3G, but th the service was excellent on the plateau. I mean, I had instant Texas. It was, there was no delay. I want to believe the connection will be good. Assuming all goes well, I mean, worst case scenario, I just film on my other cameras and I upload later. But the plan is to do a complete Giza Plateau tour. And I'm talking around the Sphinx, all the pyramids, and showing you all the other sites. And I especially want to go around all those damn locked doors and gates they have all over the plateau and film it like live. Like, look at this. Um, see this is what I'm talking about. See this locked gate. Um, and I also want to show you just the various huge structures and massive stone cut blocks that you've never seen or heard about, or at least that most people haven't. Because we've all seen and heard about the Sphinx and the pyramids, but most people have no idea all the other incredible structures that are right there. And it's not to, like, guys, I had been studying Egypt for a couple years, a few years, five years before I even got there. And I'm like, or even as a kid, because that's how I fell in love was in the sixth grade when I learned about it. And I'm like getting out there in the first five, 10 minutes, I'm like, whoa, this isn't how I thought this was laid out. This is interesting. Learning things like that, like that, like that. And because so many of you, um, you know, many people in the world won't have the opportunity to travel to Egypt or it could be a long time before you do, I want you to live vicariously through me and my camera. Since I'm blessed enough to be able to get out there, it, the best thing I could do is at least show you through my own eyes. And if I could do a complete tour of the Giza Plateau, which will take hours, it would be, I think, it, epic. Next level epic. So I really want to do that. Um, Let's see here. Who else has some questions here? Do you still wear your Moldavite, Moldavite necklace? Uh, no, it broke, but I still have it, and I'll never get rid of it. I think it was wonderful. I have it. a broken half, but it's still intact through the pendant that it's held on. I still think there's something to it, but it could just be the power of belief. Like, placebo is a real thing. Um, okay, all right, here we go. I just got the, the battery, low battery comment. Hold on. I'm at 20%. I got a little bit longer. All right, so let me go for another, if I'm at 20%, let's just say, let me go for another, I'm, I'm having fun, I'm in no rush. I kind of got to pee, but my uh, dog Sawyer is doing okay, and it's really dependent on him. I fed him before the live stream, and um, I just want to take him on a walk. That's my plan for this evening. Anyway, so let's say another 20 minutes, 30 max, but that seems like a little bit of a while, so maybe I'll wrap this up in 10, 15 minutes. It depends. If you guys want to keep me around, send me some super chat questions. Um, but anyways, going back to the Moldavite, the power of belief in placebo is a real thing. And placebo is power of belief. And now this is a scientific fact. It is unexplained how placebo works, which is that when they do various, when they give people various placebos, people have been cured from various different ailments from the power of believing they have received something that would fix them. How do you explain that? And this has happened time and time again, and it's happened with multiple different ailments and diseases. It is unexplainable, it is unknown to science. Just like how, and let me give you an easier example. It's known that like, you know, the power of laughter and humor, you know, and you know, um, increasing someone's spirits can help them heal, that's known. Um, positivity is a good thing. So I think that this all ties into what I was talking earlier with law of attraction and other things, um, which is that belief, I think this is what the Bible meant. I used to think it, it, it meant, you know, pass around the collection plate and put money in it, like I said earlier. I think now it might have to do with the power of the human mind and the power of belief is how all these magnificent people throughout history believed they could do something, you know? 
So let's see here. What else we got? Someone wrote, oh, thank you, Ray, for the super chat. If anyone has any other, I'm looking. Okay, here we go. Ray Portella. I'm a young adult and just coming out of high school. I want to pursue archaeology, but I don't know the best route. Do you have any advice on how to get into dig sites and start researching? Oh, man. All right, so this is extremely tough because most archaeologists, a vast, overwhelming majority of archaeologists don't ever get to dig anything ever. It's super sad, too, because, like, they should be allowed to. That's what I want them to do. I'm on their side. I don't even care what they believe. If they believe there's no ancient any, you know, technology, don't matter to me. Just go dig and show me what you find. That's all I want. Just show me what you find and do it. It's like I was talking earlier in this live stream about Gobekli Tepe. What's going on there? You know, they rediscovered the site 20 plus years ago or longer. What, what year are we in now? 25 plus years ago? And we're still, we have barely made any headway. Like, what the hell is going on? Like, unreal. So, okay. So to answer your question, if you have a total desire to go there and dig, then you can make it happen. If some archaeologists can get into dig sites, then you can too. You got to figure out what it takes to make that happen, right? So, um, I don't know, man. I saw some recent article that was floating around about how uh, some universities are going to cut back on archaeology degrees. Like, they're eliminating it. This is like a, two days ago. It's extremely concerning. Let me, give you an ex let me just give you another idea. Here I am on YouTube. I'm helping bringing mysteries of ancient civilization to light. Whether I'm right or wrong on things, it doesn't even matter. I developed a following and found a, a, a means of living and, and, and bringing information to others. And I did it all by myself. So it's all about creativity. But, you know, when it comes to digging things up, you know, there's government regulations. I mean, you, you can't just go out and dig. You'll, you know, you can spend the rest of your life in prison or some crap, you know. Ah, uh, if I were you, I would, uh, here's what I would recommend doing. Find out what archaeologists have been to the notable sites, whether it's Gobekli Tepe. Um, I won't include Egypt because that's all so government run. You ain't, no, ain't nobody going in there to dig unless they are affiliated and, and have the permissions and other things. Um, but I would, I would research any more recent archaeological digs that have happened in, say, the last 10 years. Find out who's physically done that. Find out their email addresses because they're probably academics or whoever. And just ask, like, hey, I want to be an archaeologist, but I want to do it with the, the prospect of digging someday and find out how to make that happen or what their best advice is and go from there. Uh, that's my best advice. Find out who else has already done it recently not 20 years ago. The world is changing very quickly. And like Andrew just said from ancient uh, um, uh, historical criticisms, uh, ancient history criticisms, go sub subscribe to him. You know, there's truth there. And I, I'm starting to think, guys, that maybe everything's going to be government run now. But then maybe that means you need to become a government archaeologist of some kind, someone that gets that federal funding. Maybe that's what you need to do. Where there is a will, there is a way. Now, hold on. I'm seeing other super chats here. We got... Oh, we got Kira again. Oh my God, you're so generous. Jimmy, isn't it uh, just one thing? Anyways, do you know Nikola Tesla and Swami uh, Vith, uh, I always mess up this name, were friends. I did not, I don't know if I knew that actually. You should listen to read what uh, in Raja Yoga, what they all said. Do you think you would find value based on the subjects you have spoken about tonight? Yeah, I don't think it's an accident. Right, hang on, because I'm going to make a note. Make another one. I made one earlier for the other comment. That way, I definitely go down this rabbit hole. Swarmy Tesla. Thanks, sweetheart. Extremely generous, too, by the way. Because who knows what that rabbit hole that's going to lead me down. I didn't know that. If I knew this, I knew it five years ago. I've since forgotten. I don't feel like I knew this at all. Now, when I go and read on it and, and, and do some Googling and seeing the connections there, if I see anything that rings a bell, then I'll be like, oh, okay, I did hear this. Thank you so much. Um, Dustin Harry, I've been diving into Christianity and the origin of the religion. Gnosticism is very intriguing with its pursuit of knowledge. Have you studied, do you study religion? Well, actually, to be honest with you, I have a minor in religious studies, which was so awesome. I always been curious about world religions. And then when I was getting my undergrad, I wanted to get some GPA boosters. So I'm like, all right, let me, let me establish a minor and I'll, I'll do electives essentially and, or, 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 or orient I basically take, the, take up the minor as an elective way of boosting my GPA and 
I was like, I need to choose the most interesting things possible because I'll do better in the subject if I'm actually interested. And it turned, it worked out so well in, in a couple of ways. One is because the, at least, all right, so I was going to ASU, Arizona State University. And at that time, I don't know if it's still the same, but it was super easy for some of these courses to get A pluses, which is a big deal for boosting a GPA. And uh, just the way the courses were laid out. I, should, I don't know if I should brag about it. I don't really care. I'll just tell you, hey, if you guys need a GPA booster, there, just go to ratemyprofessor.com and you can look up. There's certain, there's certain teachers that do discussion board posts exclusively, which basically means that they'll assign you a chapter in a book, or a textbook, and then you're required to write out three paragraphs, you know, explaining each one of these three little topics within the, the, that particular chapter or something. It's so easy. If you do it, you get credit. A plus. But in the process, I learned a ton of stuff on a topic I was already interested in. So I learned about all kinds of religions across the world. And uh, sorry, I, that was my, uh, <laughs> that was my, I'm using a uh, lavalier mic here. And it knocked, when I swiped with my aggressive hand motion, I totally knocked my phone off. I think I did that when I did my post-Egypt uh, live stream last December. <laughs> that woke Sawyer up. It scared him. Hi, Sawyer. Hi, buddy. He's getting ready. All right, guys, just a few more minutes because I should head out with Sawyer, but we still got 900 plus people. So who else has another? Yeah, someone wrote, take another swig. Sure. <laughs> Drunk ass just throwing his freaking damn thing on there. I'm not, I'm only slightly buzzed, guys. I'm not drunk. I'm below the legal limit. I can say that for sure. I'm going driving right after this. That's a joke. Um, but it's so funny. Anytime I drink on these live streams, you know, people like, I see the comments like, drunkard. <laughs> what are you doing? Like, I didn't pregame it before this one. Um, all right, so let's see here. Let Jimmy White Fork Wasted laugh my ass off. God, I love these comments. This is one of the funnest things. Um, so that's your fifth glass, man. It really isn't. It's my second. Um, you guys are wonderful. I'd say the juice. <laughs> Should I end the live stream on my hammered? Um, somebody asked me a question here because I'm having fun. Do some drop shots. Oh my God, here we go. Don't hit Jimmy. Oh, this is so funny. Thanks for your, thank, uh, Hang Buick. Thank you so much. Thanks for your channel. Can't get enough of what you discuss. I really appreciate that. Jimmy, the moon, is the moon hollow? Okay, probably. There is, there is certain scientific evidence that strongly suggests it. Now, whether it's hollow because of intelligent design or something natural we don't understand, I bet on it. And, and here's how we know or it would suggest it. The, for example, the Apollo moon missions, on all the missions, they brought over seismic, seismographs. And so on the five, how many times? Did we go there five times? Um, and yeah, because it was supposed to be six and the Apollo 13 fell apart. Anyways, every time we went there, we placed various seismic graphs, uh, graphs around and have since observed and still do today, various earthquakes that happen. Now, the fact that the moon has earthquakes, I think is interesting because isn't it supposed to be a dead planet? Why is it still having earthquakes? But there could be other things to explain that. Regardless, when they threw the Saturn V uh, launch vehicle or whatever it was into it on purpose in order to measure the seismographs, this is back in the 70s, they annotated, and this happened on more than one occasion, uh, twice they annotated this, which is that the moon reverberated like, they described it as ringing like a bell and that the seismic reverberations between all the seismographs across you know, the various areas they had put it went on for hours and hours on end. And it just indicated that perhaps there was a cavity of some kind or size within the center of the moon or whatever. There are other interesting things about it as well, such as that the uh, craters of the moon are far more wide than they are shallow. Google that. That's something easy you could check for yourself. Or fact, you could Google actually moon seismic activity. Type in the Saturn V launch vehicle we threw into it and then look into with your own eyes. Just Google craters of the moon or whatever. Um, well, don't do Craters of the Moon. I'll bring up a, a natural uh, park in Idaho. That's what it's called. But anyway, look into it. And it, there are very smart people that have just simply asked questions saying, well, that's interesting. Why are they so wide and so shallow? Just look into it. And what now, if you want to go down the conspiracy and the crazy part of it, some people think that is a hollowed out planetoid. The reason why the moon is so shyly, or shiny is because of the metallic uh, substance, which is the reason why it reflects and it's so white. Um, and people say that it's metal shavings from whatever side the, you know, maybe the iron or whatever the core was being metallic and that it was purposely hollowed out and that it was a space vehicle. 
and it was brought here and meant to be the because you got to keep in mind, there's certain other things about it. The, the, the mass of itself is completely unnatural for the size of it. And that it's um, one-fifth the size of planet Earth, but it's like something like one... I'm going to get the number wrong, but I want to say one-eightieth the, the, the mass that it should be or whatever it was. Um, so it's unbelievably light for what it should be based on our current knowledge. Now, maybe that's a completely natural explanation that we don't yet understand. Or could it be evidence of a long lost intelligent design that goes back who knows how long. I wonder that. And I pro I kind of think, because I, I think there's something about the moon. There's this huge rush to go mine there, but yet it's all in the DL. It's really weird. Um, hold on, we got a super chat here I don't want to miss. Rico Hirano Tuschino. I, I said that wrong. Suschino, uh, forgive me. Rico will say. Thanks, uh, bringing up Neville Goddard. I think he is legitimate, but I haven't quite figured it out. Sounds like you did. Listen to his lectures. Go on YouTube and type, type in Neville Goddard um, imagination or divine imagination, things like that. Um, and just Neville Goddard lectures. And just, the, there's numerous ones, but maybe look into ones based on view count, kind of get an idea what he's about. I think he nailed it. That's what I think, because he's saying things that I already thought on my own from my own time in isolation of living alone and just dabbling in the little spiritual realm and doing my own studies of what the ancients said and dabbling into law of attraction and all this other stuff. And to me, I'm like, how have I never heard of this guy? And he's saying things to me that make a lot of sense. And I think that his argument that the Bible has been vastly misinterpreted, I suspect he's onto something. I really do. I could be wrong. But if nothing else, check him out and think for yourselves, guys. Okay, Rob Weisenhunt, welcome back. P.S. Please share anything you find about the resonant and acoustic acoustical properties of the pyramids and other structures. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's wild, man. I've never heard anything like it. Even being inside the, uh, the so-called King's Chamber of the Great Pyramid, I've never heard anything like it. A whisper like goes back and forth. It's like nothing else. Now, of course it's granite and stone is gonna bounce sound back and forth. It's like nothing else. But the question is, was this stuff used for healing? And I'm not necessarily saying the pyramid, but there's been other sites too, all over, whether it's Peru and other sites around Egypt, they all have acoustic properties to them, which are interesting. It's like, was this on purpose? Was it intentional to make that happen? Or is it just a byproduct of just the design itself? I think there's something to it. Um, what else you guys got? because I'll have to wrap this up a little bit. Once it, my phone says 10%, I'll probably bail. And plus, I do got to use the bathroom, but I don't want to take the, the break to do it. I'd rather just keep going. And right now, we're at, I'm at 187 minutes. Wait, am I at three hours? Oh my God, I am. It's 6.41 p.m. and I started this like at six, or excuse me, 3.35 or so p.m. I can't believe I just did three hours. I've had so much fun. Man, maybe I should talk for a living more often. Do you guys think I should do live? All right, here's a fun thing. I'll wrap this up. Unless there's any other super chats. Super chats will keep me here. I'm not going to deny that. Um, so do you guys think I should do some live speaking engagements of some kind? Maybe tour around? I mean, I could start small. I don't know whether it's... I mean, there's different venues that I could do. I could set it up myself or whatever. Would, do you guys think there's... I mean, I like to speak in person. Let me say that. I think it's incredibly thrilling. Uh, when I was in the military and in the corporate world, I was a train the trainer in both settings. So I did, I did, you know, in-person speaking, and, and I also got an undergrad in communications. And so, of course, I had to do public speaking coursework for that. So we had to give presentations, and as well as when I went back to school, it was required. Every single course required in the program for the MBA uh, to do presentations in front of the class, and I love it. It is something really exciting about it. Um, I, I just like speaking in person, and I guess I'm answering my own question. I should totally do this, huh? I think it'd be fun, and I think I'm better at speaking in person than I am on camera. I've had to improve my camera work because it's kind of awkward. I mean, I like talking in front of the camera, but it is awkward. I feel like I can feed off an audience way better than this. Um, there's something very inclusive about it. So, um, thanks, Diddy. I love you, too. Have a Thank you. Did you're amazing. Uh, who else we got here? But anyways, all right, so you guys are saying yes. All right, I should totally do it. Yeah, do Vegas. <laughs> yeah, I should do. Live from the MGM Grand, or, or maybe, no, Circus Circus. Then maybe they'll allow me to come in there and talk. 
All right, guys, let's see here. Anything else? Um, Kira, your, your super chat's still up here at the top. Those $50 ones hang in there for a long time. It's laid out by minutes. I should probably figure out how this works. Like a dollar lasts for a certain period of time, five dollars lasts for a certain period of time. They're all, it's based in the more you leave, the longer it stays up there. I need to start prioritizing now that I understand how this works that to the lower dollar amounts to read off first. Um, yeah, sorry, Anthony, circus, circus, laughing my ass off, I know, right? <laughs> I go there. Or maybe the stratosphere, since my ideas are th so through the atmosphere, so through the roof. All right, well, since I'm well over three hours, I can't believe it. That's how I know I should probably be doing something like this live, and that if it feels fun to go um, chat for hours on end and for it to feel so quick, maybe that's something that uh, I should really dive into, so... Any other thoughts, guys? Um, someone keeps asking me, David Wilcock. I don't know. I don't want to say anything. I don't know. I, I haven't met him. I don't know him. I've, I, I remember reading one of his books on audio a long time ago when I was first dabbling into the spiritual realm. Um, this is like, they say, 2015 or 16. Um, so I don't know. I'd have, to, I'd have to get to, I don't know. Um, oh, what the hell is this webcam's hot girls and boys? Hold on. Hide user from channel. Blocked. Remove, I should report this. Remove, perverts. <laughs> Glad I saw that. Anyways, guys, I guess I'll wrap this up. If there's any others, if anyone has anything else they wanna say, if you wanna be the last super chat of the night, leave it now. Um, otherwise, I'm, I'm super grateful, you guys are wonderful. So just for everybody that uh, hasn't heard earlier, a week from today, Friday, I'm doing a live stream from the Giza Plateau. It's gonna be epic, assuming everything goes well with the connection, I believe that it will. I'm set up for it, and uh, I'm gonna give you guys a tour of the plateau like you've never seen before. I'm gonna walk around as best as I can, and, um, oh, hold on, you did it again. What is your name, is it Ladder, or is that just a acronym? Ladder Linsfist, you are a true gentleman. Very, very sweet of you. All right, guys, if there's any others, um, but I guess I'll wrap this up here. Yep, oh, it's, it, Hold on. I know that it's time because my phone just said 10%. And I said I'd wrap it up now. I'm at 191 minutes, so well over three hours. So you guys are great. Say bye. Don't keep me here any longer. Gonna go walk Sawyer, even though he's walking. Oh, hold on. I perceive myself as gunky. You're really cool. You're really cool. That's very nice of you. Um, all right, guys, I'm wrapping this up. Thank you so much for all your support. You guys are very generous and I'm very grateful. And I'm gonna... I'm gonna end this now, let's see here. All right, bye everybody.